Nebraska coach Bo Pelini is a former Ohio State captain. Back in his home state tonight, his Cornhuskers are led by dual threat quarterback Taylor Martinez. Urban Meyer got his first Big Ten win a week ago. And Braxton Miller and the Buckeyes are now the league's only unbeaten team. Ohio State ranked 12th, number 21, Nebraska. Big Ten battle next. Welcome to Saturday Night Football presented by Windows. Tonight, from the Horseshoe in Columbus, the Buckeyes welcome Nebraska for only the third time ever in this city. Now, the first time as a Big Ten Conference foe. The undefeated Buckeyes and the once beaten Nebraska Cornhuskers set to do battle. Welcome, everybody. Brad Nessler along with Todd Blacklish. Partner, these two teams got off to good starts in Big Ten play last week. It was a tough, hard-fought win over Michigan State for the Buckeyes. And we saw Nebraska come from behind to beat uh, Ohio, uh, Wisconsin, I should say. And I don't think here in week six we've ever had a game where the entire team is defined by what their quarterbacks do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these two teams go as their quarterbacks go. And the good thing for both teams, whether you're talking about Nebraska's Taylor Martinez or Braxton Miller of Ohio State, they're both both playing at a higher level this year than at any point last season. I think tonight they both are going to be counted on to make big plays in the run and throw game, but also, and just as importantly, take care of the football because both of these guys sometimes try to make every play and they don't always do that. Okay, dual threat guys, but they're not yeah. the same, are they? No, they're both excellent runners, but they do it in a little different style. Taylor Martinez is a 4-3 sprinter and he's a north and south runner. And I think his speed sometimes surprises people and they lose angles when they're trying to, to catch up to him. He's only averaged five carries, designed runs per game. That's about half as many as last year. I think that number might go up tonight. Now, Braxton Miller is a 4-3 sprinter also, but he can run 4-3 in a phone booth. He can make people miss in an uncanny way. He can plant his foot in the ground, change directions without losing speed, and because of that, that makes him one of the most dynamic runners, not just a quarterback runner, any kind of runner in all of college. Football. It's homecoming at Ohio State, and the fans are in sync with their team. Grace Potter is going to kick it in gear. When we come back, we're going to kick it off. Over 100,000 packed into the horseshoe for only the 11th night game in Ohio Stadium history. As we check in, third member of our team, Holly Rowe. Holly? Well, guys, as you mentioned, Braxton Miller is so crucial for Ohio State. 82% of his team's offense last week against Michigan State. So it was a concern when he got knocked out of the game on two separate occasions and got dinged up a little bit. Coaches want him to stay healthy. In this game a year ago, that was crucial. Ohio State was up, cruising. He twisted his ankle in the third quarter went out and left the game. They never scored again. In fact, only 41 yards of total offense in that loss. So coaches sat him down this week, went over his quarterback reads. That's when he chooses to keep it or hand it to someone else. They said there were eight different times in that game against Michigan State where he should have given the ball to someone else. Spread the wealth, let other people take a few more hits. We'll say how often Braxton Miller runs the ball tonight and if he's able to stay healthy. All right, Holly, Urban Meyer and his first season head coach here and off to a 5-0 start. And Bo Pelini in his fifth year as a head coach at Nebraska, a former Ohio State captain as a player and a former good one, a safety back in his playing days. He's only been back here one other time, and that was when he was a grad assistant at Iowa. So it's been a long time since he's been back home in this stadium. Tried to play it off, I think, a little bit like yeah. it wasn't a big deal, but <laughs> I, I have a hard time believing that when you come into this place. Absolutely. Nebraska won the toss and deferred. So Brett Meyer is going to kick it off. And the Buckeyes in the 90th homecoming, in the 90th year in this stadium, will get the football first. Briante Dunn and Philly Brown are back deep for Ohio State. Great atmosphere, week two of Big Ten play.
Devin Smith, two yards deep, will bring it out. Wolf oh, took a shot at the 14-yard line. And I mean a shot <laughs> from Charles Jackson. That's action Jackson right there, Todd. Well, I'll tell you what. Ohio State, their first four home games were at noon. This is the first night game. They better be awake now. <laughs> My. Braxton Miller, who Holly just talked about, will bring out the Buckeyes at the 15-yard line. There's his numbers on the year. A dynamic runner, as good as any running back in the Big Ten, not just quarterback, but also a very talented arm. His feet are what gets him in trouble throwing it sometimes. They start off with a two tight end set. And we got a whistle that stops play before we get underway. Ball start, 81 offense, five yard penalty. It remains first down. It was one of those two tight ends, Nick Van Etz, with a false start. So now they're back at their 10, not exactly where they wanted to start the game. Miller has a look. Both receivers to the near side from the 10 yard line. Gives it off. And tough run of about three yards by Carlos Hyde. So we take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Avis. The aforementioned Carlos Hyde. He's got to carry the load tonight in the backfield. Devin Smith, big play wide receiver. And Travis Howard's already got three interceptions in that Buckeye secondary. And Evan Smith is their deep threat. He's got four long touchdowns. He's up here at the top of the screen, and Nebraska knows they're going to get some shots down the field. They feel like they got to win those one-on-one -on -one battles with Devin Smith. Here it's Hyde. Gets some good blocking and gets across the 15 out near the 17-yard line. Cease Evans made the tackle. Carlos Hyde really showed up for this team in the final drive up in East Lansing last week. They ran the ball eight straight plays, and he had about half of his total yardage for the game in that final drive, including three big first down runs. Let's see if we're going to see Braxton Miller's first pass of the night. Third down and seven on the Buckeye opening drive. A bunch set of receivers to his right. He's looking that way. Pressure coming. And he got the pass off incomplete. It was Stoneburner, the intended receiver. But again, he avoided the sack as Will Compton was applying the pressure. Well, Compton is a very active middle linebacker. And both Polini and John Papuchas, they want to blitz this young quarterback. They want to get after him some. He had a free run to the quarterback, and Miller did a good job of eluding him enough to at least throw the ball away and avoid the sack. It's not going to do his somewhat tender ankle any good. So a punting situation already for Ohio State. End over end kick. And a one hopper taken by Amir Abdullah. Abdullah got away from the first wave and took a big shot at the end of that by Zach Bourne, the fullback. So Taylor Martinez brings out the Cornhuskers, and there's his numbers. An impressive 11 to 1 touchdown interception ratio. You know, he, he worked on his throwing mechanics and his footwork a lot in the spring and the summer with the quarterback coach, Steve Calhoun. He looks much better this year in the offense. His second year in Tim Beck's offense. And I think the biggest thing is his decision making. He knows what he wants to do with the ball in a much more efficient way. Rex Burkhead, the tailback in the eye in the first snap for the Cornhusker offense. A lot of shifting there. Buckeyes showing blitz, backing out of it. Toss sweep to Burkhead. Lost a yard. So we take a look at our impact players brought to you by Avis. Burkhead is the starter, but you're going to see a lot of Amir Abdullah, not only in the backfield, but as a return man. Kyler Reed, the tight end, is one of the main targets for Martinez. And a guy I thought played very well a week ago in the middle of the Nebraska defense. Stein Illegal Cooler. block in the back. Number 18, 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. So both offenses come out with a penalty on their opening drive. Yeah, the only difference is Nebraska's starting field position was a little bit better than Ohio State's. Three wide receivers set in there for Nebraska as they're backed up. 
inside the 30 yard line at the 29. In the shotgun is Martinez. He'll hand it off to Burkett, trying to take it wide, and same result as Shazier comes up and a loss on the play. Shazier is not the biggest linebacker, but he is very quick and very athletic. 220 pounds in the plantation, Florida. He did a great job of reading that play quickly and then using his speed to get to the ball carrier. Second down and 23. Low snap. Martinez scoops it up and gets nailed from behind by John Simon. The two time captain of the Buckeyes levels the quarterback. Well, John Simon anticipating pass. He's in a sprinter stance. He beats the left tackle to the inside. And this is a guy who plays every play with 100% full open motor. And he gets the first sack of the ball game. His second of the year. And he's got the crowd riled as well. Because now it's third down and a mile. Third and 30. Martinez clapping, asking for the ball. Finally gets it. Yeah, and, and he knew he needed the ball. The play clock was running out. Delay a game. Number three offense. Penalty. It remains third down. See, their only other away game was against UCLA. And I my hunch is that the crowd wasn't <laughs> quite as lively in Pasadena as it is right now in Columbus for this night game. Not saying the Bruins are laid back, right. but they're not these guys. No. And they are making some noise, and that's third and 35. Martinez flushed. He's going to take off on the run, get what he can. He got it back out across the 30. And it'll be punting time for Nebraska. Well, he at least got decent yardage to maybe change the field here with this punt. And that's all you're looking for on that play. Again, these two quarterbacks both are dynamic playmakers, but they also sometimes try to make every play and they turn it over. Got to be smart in that situation. Devin Smith waiting on Brett Maher's punt. And he's going to fair catch late and then bottled it. The ball is out. Let's see. It's going to be Ohio State ball. Luckily, got back on top of it. Now Devin Smith looked indecisive on that punt return. Indecisive whether to make the fair catch. Indecisive when he tried to catch it. And very fortunate, the Buckeyes got the ball back. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC. Well, Polini told us, you know, just another road game for me. I can't worry about where I played my football in college, but he was a good one. 87 to 90 under Earl Bruce and then John Cooper. And as a senior, there's Bo making an interception. He was one of the captains of the Buckeyes. And both coaches from the state of Ohio, Urban Meyer and Bo Polini. And those guys still keep track of their oh, yeah. hometowns pretty close, just oh, like yeah. all you Ohio guys do. <laughs> We're proud of our state. Here's play action. Miller's going to float it out to Bohr in the fullback. And he keeps his balance and got about seven before he's knocked out of bounds. You know, just to finish up that point about the Ohio connection and the Ohio roots, Tim Beck, the uh, offensive coordinator, is also from Youngstown for Nebraska for Bo Pelini. And seven of Urban's nine assistants have Ohio roots. Were born and raised in Ohio. Penalty markers down. Tim was telling us last night he had to get about 40 tickets for yeah. his friends and relatives. Ball start. Offense. Number 77 and 79. Five yard penalty. It remains second down. Well, that's both guys yeah. on the right side jumping. Well, a little nervous energy. You know, those are mental mistakes in, in both of the opening possessions for Ohio State. Again, they played their first four games at noon. This one, they've been sitting around all day watching other games, excited to play, great energy in the stadium, maybe a little bit too jazzed up right now to start. And that's what Bo Pelini said the Cornhuskers were last week against Wisconsin before they settled down. Miller, he's not going to get away this time. Sacked by Eric Martin. And for Martin, that's his 
Fifth sack of the year. Four and a half, actually. Well, Martin's going to work inside. There's also a corner blitz coming from here that's going to force Braxton Miller to have to try to step up. But there's nowhere for him to go because Martin is there on the inside. Well-designed and a well-timed pressure by the Nebraska defense. That's a 20th sack already this year for Nebraska. And it backs things up to a third and long again. Five minutes into the game, we've had third down and miles to go for Ohio State third and 15 right Nebraska here. Nebraska is confused defensively. Miller has time. Crossing route thrown a little bit behind Philly Brown, and it's incomplete. Well, I'll tell you what, if that ball is thrown better, Philly Brown's still running because Nebraska was running in man defense, and Philly Brown's going to cross the formation. If he catches this, he is still running up the middle of the field. But the ball was thrown on his back shoulder a little bit. Still possibly a catchable ball, but you want to hit him on the move and let him keep running. So Ben Buchanan's going to have to punt it away. And Amir Abdullah stands back at the 40-yard line. High kick. Abdullah's going to have to call a fair catch here and will back around the 32 with 9.36 remaining first quarter. Martinez and the Huskers coming out on offense in a minute. On the banks of the old Latanzi here in Columbus, no score in the first quarter. Nebraska's got it. First down at the 31-yard line. First down's been where they've been making their money, Ledge. Yeah. Well, a, a bulk of their offense has come on first down. They've gotten a lot of big chunk yardage plays off of play-action passes on first down so far in the first month of the season. Burke had the tailback in the eye. We'll get the carry. And again, nothing there. That front four is pretty stout for Ohio State. Well, that's the strength of this Ohio State defense. You've got Hankins and Dobo inside, and then you've got Williams and Simon on the outside. And, uh, that's, that's the real challenge. Nebraska coming in, the top team in the Big Ten in total offense and rushing offense. Ohio State's defense really rose to that challenge last week against the Spartans. Martinez now in the shotgun. Gives it off. Burkhead barely gets back to the line of scrimmage again. Goble came around to make the tackle. Goble's about 290. Hankins, the big fella in there, is 322, and that's down about, yeah. what, 20 pounds or so? Yeah, spelt 322. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he is moving better, and he's playing more plays with more energy than he did a year ago as well. Martinez throws and it's intercepted down the sideline by Roby. Roby to the end zone. Touchdown. If you're going to make that throw, you better make it on time or something like that could happen. Absolutely. you got to make it on time and you got to throw the out out. You, you can't throw it out back to the inside where bad things happen most of the time. Roby's first interception of the season, and he takes it 40 yards for a touchdown. Drew Basil in for the point after. Seven nothing Ohio State. 8.29 remaining in the first quarter. Great play on the ball by Bradley Roby, and he takes it to the house. Buckeyes in front. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned, making tires that go the distance, inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Ledge, Bradley Roby driving down the sideline after that interception. Yeah, and we talked about the leaner Jonathan Hankins. Here he is right here, and watch this inside pressure. I think it affected Taylor Martinez. He felt Hankins bearing out on him, didn't get enough on the outside on that throw, and Roby, for the second week in a row, a huge play. Last week, it was a block punt against Michigan State. Tonight, an interception returned for the touchdown. 42 points off miscues by the opposition on the season for Ohio State. And if the stadium wasn't rocking before, it is now. Basil to kick. Abdullah will bring it out from the end zone, and he doesn't even make the 10-yard line. 
Buckeyes, big play on the special teams. Let's get an update right now from Robert Flores. Robert. Hey, Brad, Taco Bell studio update. West Virginia led 21-7 on Texas, but the Longhorns have scored 14 unanswered. Jackson Jeffcoat recovers the fumble. West Virginia, however, answered with a field goal and the Mountaineers on top. Late first half in Austin, 24 to 21. Here's seven nothing. And the Cornhuskers have been unable to get anything going on offense and it continues maybe a two yard gain for Burkhead. So far, Ohio State's defensive front is really kind of controlling things and they're locked into those early down runs. Nebraska has been pretty conservative on first down and Ohio State is ready for it. We've run 13 plays between the two teams. We've got 17 yards of offense. The score obviously came from the defense. Martinez keeps this one. Kind of an ugly slide. He's close to a first down and Shazier I think shaking up a little bit on the play. Holding his right knee. Well, at least a, a manageable third down situation for Nebraska as they're going to get time to talk about it and think about it because of the injury to Shazier. Ryan's a sophomore out of Plantation, Florida. He tried to sort of walk it off and then hit the deck. He might have had friendly fire there. Yeah. I think he hit the shoulder pad of one of his teammates. At his mom and dad Thursday night after practice, they were up from Florida. His dad, Vernon, is the team chaplain for the Miami Dolphins. Here he's saying a prayer right now for his kid. Yeah. Came in as a leading tackler. Up but walking off. We'll check on him and hope he can return tonight, but not for a player or two, I'm sure. So third down and a yard, as Todd said, a manageable third down situation for the first half of the Cornhuskers now. This is where you really, as an offensive line, you got to take care of Jonathan Hankins because he is a powerful guy who is able to disrupt short yardage plays. Martinez, he didn't get much of a push there because of that defensive front. And the officials coming in right in on the yellow line. So this one's going to be maybe something they have to measure. The Nebraska offense started slow a week ago when we saw them in Lincoln. The, the Wisconsin defense kind of held the edge in that first half, and they're off to a little bit of a slow start up front in this game. And they will bring out the change to have a look at this one. Bo Pelini staring down the line, trying to see whether or not his team yeah. eked out a half yard that they needed, and they did by about uh, the tip of the football. Well, he got a Youngstown spot instead of an <laughs> Ashtabula spot. <laughs> I think Nebraska's got a throw here on this first down. They've been too run heavy on first down. They got to see if they can loosen up this defense a little bit. Well, that's a first first down of the ball game. With seven and a half to go in the quarter. Burkhead cuts back in the middle, his best run of the night, and he's off to the races. Burkhead in a foot race. 40, 30, he's going to be run down, but not until he gets all the way to the nine yard line. What a run. Got a flag down at the end of the play. Unofficially 73 yards. First little foul, face match. Number two of the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. 73 plus about four and a half. This is just great vision by Burkhead because this is supposed to be a zone play this way, and he sees an opening back this way and makes that decision on his own. He sees nothing where the play was called. He dances a little bit in the hole and then pops it out the backside for a huge game. Abdullah now 
In to give Burkett a rest after that long run on first and goal. He gets the carry. Cuts inside. Battles his way to about the one. Storm Klein was holding him up. And Amir kept his legs moving. It's going to be second down and goal, and Burkhead's coming back in. Nebraska has been very strong in the red zone so far this year. 25 opportunities, 21 scores, 17 of those touchdowns. I think when you have a dual threat quarterback, that makes you particularly difficult to defend in the red zone, or in this case, in goal line offense. Burkhead talking to his fullback. Second down and goal. Three tight ends set in there. Burkhead got him there. Did he get him in? Not quite. The third down at about the one foot line. That close to a tie game. Nebraska's run it 11 times. They've only thrown one pass, and that was a touchdown by Ohio State. Now they got a loaded backfield, and Martinez sprints out. Burkhead's going to take the snap, and he'll pitch it to Abdullah, and he's in for the touchdown. <laughs> How about that formation? Inside the one-yard line, you go to a little trickeration. But what you gain with that by Burkett taking the snap, and that's the risk of him getting under center and making a clean exchange. But he does that, but then you get an extra blocker because as soon as he pitches it, he's the lead blocker on the play. 92 yards in a little over three minutes. Meyer to try to tie it up with the extra point. And he does with 526 remaining in the first quarter. Big Ten battle is dead even. First it was Rex Burkhead going 73 yards to get him down close. Then he took the snap, pitched to his tailback teammate. Touchdown, seven off. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Ohio State 4-0 on their home field this season. Right now tied up with Nebraska 7-7. 92-yard drive and seven plays. And Martinez didn't have to do much. Just pitch it to number 22, and then number 22 could pitch it to Amir Abdullah, who was one of our impact players and just made an impact with a one-yard touchdown run. Maher to kick, Smith and Dunn are back deep. And this one too deep. They'll bring it out to the 25 for Ohio State's offense. Well, when you're the queen of the charts, there's always someone looking to replace you. The riveting new drama from the writer of Thelma and Louise. ABC's Nashville, the drama, begins Wednesday, October 10th. I hear that's supposed to be pretty good. I heard it was good, too. Well, so far, the uh, Corn Huskers have held Ohio State's offense in check, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, six plays, eight yards. I think it's time for Braxton Miller to be called upon to make a play. Last week, 315 total yards he accounted for, 82% of their offense. I think he's got to make a couple plays this drive and maybe take a shot down the field to Devin Smith in this drive if they can get a first down. Hyde in the backfield with him. And he's going to pitch it wide on the fly to Brown. And Philly Brown only got about a yard as we get another update from Robert. That's right, Brad. Dr. Pepper 10 conference update. In the Big 12, the Longhorns have come storming back, take their first lead of the night. Joe Bergeron from in close. And after trailing 21-7, Texas leading number 8, West Virginia, 28-24. Second quarter in Austin. Brad. Here it's seven up with a little under five minutes remaining in the first quarter. Three wide outs to the bottom of your screen. And it's an empty backfield now for Braxton Miller on second and nine. He's just going to take off quarterback run all the way. Got it across the 30 to about the 31 picked up five. 
Yeah, no disguising what that was. That, again, he's your most dynamic playmaker. You need him to start getting involved in the offense and making some plays. And the best thing about that play is it brought up a third down in a reasonable situation against this Cornhusker defense. Buckeyes came in about 43% on their third down conversions. That's kind of middle of the pack, below average, actually. They're down at four, and again, same set. This time he wants to throw. Has all day. Still looking. Scrambles to his right. He's running out of time. Here comes the Cornhuskers' defensive front. Will they get him? They do. And the ball is out at the end of the play. Hold on. Covered by Corey Lindsley, the center. Well, we talked about these two quarterbacks both have the ability to make big plays, but they also sometimes don't take care of the football. We've seen an errant throw resulting in an interception return for a touchdown by Martinez. And that time, Braxton Miller trying to scramble around and make a play a little careless with his ball security. Doesn't tuck it away as he's going to the ground. The ball gets knocked out clearly before he was down. And that could have been excellent field position for Nebraska. Third straight three and out for the Buckeyes. Buchanan's punt. Abdullah back to the 30. Again, he got by the first wave. Look out for this guy. He's got great speed. The punter to beat. And the punter got him. Luckily for Ohio State, Buchanan, a touchdown saving tackle. Well, that was all Buchanan because that was a good punt. Not very good coverage. And then Buchanan with a touchdown saving tackle. I like Abdullah's courage. I mean, he, he wants to return the ball. He is not hesitant as a return guy. Boy, that is a shoestring tackle yeah. for sure at the just inside the 30 yard line of the 28, but a 42 yard return of a 45 yard punt. So they're right about back to the same line of scrimmage. Before the kick, I don't usually give too much love to kickers. But I know he's a heck of a play by Buchanan, because <laughs> otherwise it's 14-7. For a guy who thinks that punters and kickers should be in a bullpen, you have to give a little love to that play. Well, I still think that, but it was a good play. <laughs> a pistol set with a couple extra cylinders in there in the backfield, and that's Braylon Hurd. And Hurd hurdles one tackler, and he's got a first down all the way down to the 10-yard line. I don't know if it's the formation or what it is, but Ohio State really lost leverage on this play. It was an excellent block by Kenny Bell, the wide receiver coming in on a crackback, but they really out leveraged the Ohio State defense and turned that into a big play on the perimeter. First and 10 at the 11. And now it's Martinez trying to do it himself. He's got it down to the two. Eight yard run by the quarterback talked about Martinez coming into the game averaging five design run plays a game. That was his fourth so far in the ball game. They're going to use him more now that they're into the Big Ten schedule. They saved him early. They're leaning on him a little bit more tonight. They can get a first down at the one. They spotted at the three where it's second down and two. Martinez rolling to his right. Throws incomplete. And it was McDermott, one of the tight ends. And it's third down and two. Only the second pass of the night maybe should have been caught. A little hot sauce on it. Yeah, it did. Not a very long throw, and he zipped it in there pretty good. Big third down here for the Buckeye defense. And the fans in that end zone are going to make it tough on Martinez. And now they're going to use the same formation that scored the touchdown. Martinez comes out. Burkhead will take the snap. It's the same play. Abdullah. Touchdown again. Three-yarder. It worked once. It worked twice. Cornhusker's back in front. And again, it was Burkhead with the key block. I mean, he is leading right up in there. You've got a 250-pound fullback in Morrow who's leading in there. But watch Burkhead turn and get right up in there on the middle linebacker, and he knocks Storm Klein right back into the end zone. That's a, a well-conceived, well-designed play. 
Brett Maher's point after. Up and good. Now I want to emphasize again how risky that is to take your tail back and put him under the center to take a snap on the two yard line because a lot of times the center is moving and you got to really stay with the, the center as he moves to make that block and two times Burkhead has executed it perfectly. Amir Abdullah has definitely made an impact on the game. His 42 yard punt return is what got him down there and he's got his second touchdown of the night. 14 to 7. Nebraska only had to go 28 yards in four plays. A little over a minute to do it. Well, we saw Nebraska last week get off to a slow start. A couple turnovers. They got behind. They never panicked. They never lost their poise. They stayed to their plan. And we're seeing that again tonight. No panic. Right now, the uh, Cornhuskers getting some running lanes and also have a touchdown lead. They were down 17 to Wisconsin, came back in 130 to 27 for the 850th all-time win in Nebraska history. Kick's going to go to about the one-yard line of Devin Smith. Dangerous return man if you can get him some room. Not a lot of room there, though. He got out to the 22-yard line. Well, Jimmy Johnson and Dale Earnhardt Jr. highlight a star-studded field when the chase for the Sprint Cup championship heads to legendary Talladega Super Speedway. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Talladega tomorrow at 1 o'clock on ESPN. You've driven by Talladega, haven't yeah. you? I just yeah. don't think it's fair that the speed limit is 55 there. I know. It's like a speed they slow trap. You down. Come on, you go 190 right, right inside the track. Yeah, I don't get that either. Yeah. Well, I'm sure I'm going to get a ticket next time I go through there if anybody in Alabama is listening to me that happens to be a state patrolman. <laughs> Four wide outs for Braxton Miller. Let's see if the uh, Buckeye offense can start to get something in gear. The score came by their defense on an interception return for a touchdown. Braxton Miller pressure coming behind him. He didn't know it and down he goes. Or if he knew it he couldn't run away from Eric Martin for the second time tonight. Yeah, Eric Martin was in a stand up position like a linebacker and he kind of was on a delay rush and Braxton Miller didn't know he was coming. He lines up off the line as a linebacker. He runs by the guard hall and chases him down. And a quick hurry up offense. Carlos Hyde trying to get some positive yardage. There's John Papuchas, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska. You see he's got those fingers all taped up. I thought he was a little bit crazy last week. And so you can see how many fingers he's got up when he signals out to his defenders. Makes they perfect say, sense now, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? They say they can see those tape marks a lot better than just his fingers. Third down and seven. Empty backfield again for Braxton Miller. Here comes a blitz. They pick up Compton on that blitz. And the throw is intercepted. Picked off by Damian Stanford. Uh, they're going to have to take a look at this one. I mean, they called it an interception. The ball was tipped, and Stafford made a nice play. I'm curious as whether that ball hit the ground, though, as Stafford dove for it. Here's another one. Rolling on the field is an interception. Stoneburner's the guy, the intended receiver. Oop. You think the tip hit? Mm. That's close. There's a lot of traffic where that football was heading. Eric Martin, who made the play on second down, is the guy who got his hands on the football, too, I think. John Chorus is our replay official. John and his gang came in, have a word with us before the ball game. So they're going to be looking at this very closely. Rolling on the field is an interception. The previous play is under further review. It looked kind of like the tip of the ball hit the ground. He had his hands on the outside of the football instead of underneath the ball. Brilliant effort by Stafford, nonetheless. Right. But I do think the point of the ball might have hit the ground. And that would be a big break for Ohio State. Stafford, if it holds up, that would be his first interception of the season. 
came in last year out of junior college, Chaffee College in California. The coaches said, you know, last year he, he's probably their most talented defensive player, but he kind of just survived on instincts last year. You know, was kind of learning the system on the fly, made a lot of plays, but didn't quite understand their concepts. This year he's playing at a much higher level because of having that additional year in the defensive system. He got a big smile on his face. I don't know what that means. He thinks the ball hit the turf and he might get away with one or if he really got the interception. We'll find out here in a second. 14 to 7 Nebraska both their touchdowns from Amir Abdullah on short runs of a yard and three yards and Ohio State score came on a Bradley Roby interception on a pick six 41 yards on the interception of Taylor Martinez with just 34 seconds remaining in the first quarter. As we wait for this call, it's worth noting the improvement in the Nebraska defense. You know, this defense gave up 653 yards to UCLA in week two. They lost the game 36 to 30. UCLA ran 94 plays. They wow. had 344 yards rushing. But ever since that game, they, they went back and made a lot of corrections. They didn't tackle well. There was a lot of yards after contact. They have really played well defensively since that point. I know that you can't go back and get that game back, but I think to a man, both the coaches and the players feel if they played yeah. UCLA again, they'd come out on the yeah. on the winning end. Here's Todd Gerlings, our referee. Ew. Well, he turned his mic off accidentally, but you could read his lips. He said the ball hit the ground. At the 25-yard line, to 38 seconds. Uh, I think they got it right Thank again. You. Tremendous effort by Stafford, but the point of the ball hit the ground, and he had his hands wrapped on the outside of the ball. <laughs> I think he knew. Yep. <laughs> Almost got away with yeah. it. Four straight three and out for Ohio State's offense now, officially. As Buchanan's got to punt it. I'm sure Abdul is in the head of Buchanan a little bit right now. Where do you want to kick this ball? Do you want to try to directional kick? Kick away from him? And we're going to have a timeout. Nebraska calls its first timeout. This is a 30-second timeout. So an Ohio State offense that uh, we said before the ball game, Todd, how their quarterback goes, that's how their offense goes. Right now, he's not going so yeah. good. Well, they're sputtering. I mean, he's off to a slow start. The offense is sputtering in general. They haven't made any kind of big plays, anything to excite the, the crowd or anybody. So right now, uh, you know, they're in a really difficult situation. And, you know, Urban told us they're a little bit void of playmakers on this yeah. offense right now. You know, Jordan Hall was maybe going to be the other guy with Braxton Miller. He got re-injured again last week against Michigan State. So they've got to have some guys step up and make some plays. We've been unable to get it into Devin Smith's hands offensively tonight either, and he's a big play waiting to happen. Fake. And it's a fake putt. And I, this is going to be awfully close. I think he's short. I think he is too. And the same guy who made a bone-jarring tackle on the opening kickoff comes through, Charles Jackson, and makes the play here. He did not get fooled because... Buchanan actually faked like he was kicking the football. He's going to go ahead and swing his leg, and Charles Jackson is not going to be fooled. He's going to stay right at home, come off the block, and tackle Buchanan short of the first down. One yard shy. And it was a good fake by Buchanan, but he couldn't quite get there. And now Nebraska is going to take over at the 31-yard line. Huge play by Nebraska's special teams, and Urban Meyer is not happy they didn't pick that up. The previous play is under further review. I want to the correct that. The previous play is under further review. We got a pair of 21s. We got one wide receiver and one cornerback. That was Stephen Osborne, number 21, who made that play. These duplicate numbers can be a little yeah. bit of an issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So they're, they're going to take a look at where this tackle was made. I think they've got it right about where it should be, but we'll wait and see. So our second review in uh, the last couple of minutes. As you take a look again, Buchanan, again, he follows through perfectly. I mean, he sold it as much as he could. And then straight ahead, there comes Osborne. 
Well, you know, he was on the tackler's body, actually. Uh, maybe it isn't a good spot. Because I don't think his body ever touched the ground until after he rolled over. Like right there, isn't he on Osborne? And then his legs sort of whip around. I don't know. Storm Klein was blocking him, and Osborne threw him off. He threw off the block because he was reading the eyes and reading the punter the whole way. I don't think his rear end ever touched the ground until mm -hmm. the very end of that tackle, and that might move it out another two or three feet. What a huge difference that would make in what's going on here in the first quarter. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Nebraska. All right, we'll keep it the way it was. Well, a risky call by Urban Meyer. He knows his offense is struggling. They haven't been able to produce much. He counts on his special teams to make a play. Now you wonder, was that just something that, that the punter decided on his own, or was that called that way? And if you're Nebraska, do you take a shot here from the 31-yard line? And flags fly. It is going to be Martinez keeping it. Prior to the snap, false start offense. Number 62, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Cole Pensick with the false start. Holly? Ohio State linebacker Etienne Sabino has been taken to the locker room. He was complaining of pain just below his right knee on the outside of his leg. He tried to wrap it up and go, but they've taken him to the locker room. Guys, this is a big deal. He was player of the week against Michigan State. Very active out there. In his place is a freshman, Joshua Perry, number 37. Yeah, Etienne had eight tackles and a sack last week in that win over the Spartans. He'll be missed. Pistol set here. Martinez throws on the run and completes it to his tight end close to a first down to Ben Cotton. Well, there's that first down productivity off the play action. Again, when you run the football and they've been averaging over 300 yards a game, that opens up play action windows and big holes in the defense, especially on early downs. Martinez took advantage of it there. I think they're just going to let that first quarter come to a close before they go back to work at about the 21 yard line with a first down. Good first quarter for Nebraska on the road, that's for sure. They lead 14 to 7. This presentation of Saturday Night Football presented by Windows will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. about set to start the second quarter 14 to 7 Nebraska out in front as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary we talked about the two quarterbacks and how vital they are to their offenses and tonight they're not much of the offense Todd no and uh, Martinez obviously has had a little bit more to say with Nebraska but it's both been mostly Burkhead and Abdullah in the running game they have really kind of taken over the game and their ability to run the football in this Ohio State defense. So Nebraska with a touchdown lead starts the second quarter just outside the red zone at the 20 yard line. First and 10. Burkhead off the right side fights his way to the corner and got about six. Burkett so productive a year ago, over 1,300 yards rushing and 15 touchdowns, 21 receptions for two more scores. He's got 79 tonight running. And he's got a couple more, but short of the first down. Going to be third down and one. Nebraska tried to really go up tempo on that second down play, thinking they might catch the Ohio State defense out of position. Pretty good reaction by the Buckeyes, and this brings up a critical third down and short for this Buckeye defense. Going to be closer to two than one. They're down. Three tight ends set out there for the Oscars again. Burkhead the tailback in the eye. He'll get the call. And he's got the first down and then so. Tough run, four yards. Shazier, who's back. In there, after being shaken up earlier, made the tackle. 
Cole Pensick, number 62, is in there, the backup left guard. He's leading the play up in there. Burkett kind of gets right on his hip. They get a good push up front. Again, the strength of this Ohio State defense is their front. And Nebraska's offensive line start to take a little control. Three wide receiver offense. They haven't used their wide receivers too much tonight. They might not get a chance here. Martinez does throw to the end zone. And just off the fingertips of an unwell. So they did try to go to one of their wideouts, skipped off his fingertips incomplete, and it'll be second down and goal. Pretty good job by Martinez avoiding a sack. Shazier came in on a blitz, had a shot to knock him down for a loss of yardage and maybe get this crowd back involved. Martinez able to get away from him and throw it away. Cotton and Reed, the two tight ends are both on the left side. Burkett. Trying to follow his blockers inside the five to the four. It'll be third down and goal there. The last two times that we've seen Nebraska inside the five, they've switched out and put Burkhead under center and done the toss. They bring their big fullback back in, Mike Merrow. Maybe a little bit too far out to run it on this particular play on the four-yard line. Arrow's going to be the fullback in an eye backfield with Burkhead the tail. Third down and goal. Play action. Martinez pressured again. Again, he avoids a sack. No, he doesn't. Shazier brings him down. It's fourth down. John Simon was the guy chasing him all over the backfield before Shazier finally cleaned up. Well, the guy who really made this play is Bradley Roby, the corner right here, because they're going to try to get the tight end back on the throwback. They're going to go play action right, and Roby doesn't bite. He stays backside and picks up the crossing tight end, and Martinez has to try to run it. Brett Myers, 7 out of 12 on the year. It's a 26-yard field goal, and it's perfect to add three more to the Nebraska lead. 11.59 remaining first half. Cornhuskers on the road and leading by 10. In the horseshoe, 17 to 7. Nebraska on the road with a 10 point lead. Rex Burkhead tonight has got 89 yards rushing already. Highlight about a 73 yarder that set up one of their scores. So he's been the offense for Nebraska tonight. And Amir Abdullah, his tailback teammate, has the two short touchdown runs. This guy that just knocked in the 26 yard field goal set to kick it away. And then Ohio State's offense hopefully will show some offense. But so far, they haven't. Been downright offensive. <laughs> it has. Braxton Miller has had seven total dropbacks. He's one out of four passing. He's been sacked three times. And this one's just going to die in the end zone. And uh, the Buckeyes will go to work at the 25 after we check in with Holly. Well, Nebraska's Rex Burkhead has been a big part of those three scores tonight. And he had a very special moment last week. He is part of the Uplifting Athletes Rare Disease chapter of Nebraska. And he had a little buddy, seven-year-old Jack Hoffman, walk out of the tunnel at Memorial Stadium. It was such a beautiful experience. This little boy is fighting brain cancer. And you can see from the look on his face, it was a touching, overwhelming For these young children that are affected by brain cancer. How cool is that? And here's Braxton Miller on the run. And there he puts on some of those moves. Todd talked about, got a great block. Braxton Miller might be gone. All the way down to the five. Philly Brown got him a great block that sprung him for extra yardage. First and goal, Ohio State. Coming into the night, he'd had at least nine called runs per game. This was only the second. They needed him to make a play, and you see what he can do. He can plant his foot and change directions without losing speed, as well as anybody in college football in a much-needed big play. Todd, he got hurt on that play, and Guyton's in at quarterback. He came out limping. You see the grimace looked on his face. Meanwhile, 
His teammates trying to get him in the end zone. And they're a little bit short. This happened last week. Yep. The first score of the drive, uh, of the opening drive when they scored, Braxton Miller went out. Guyton came in and guided them into the end zone for a touchdown. So Kenny Guyton has uh, been in this situation before. He'll be the man taking the snap here at the one yard line. On a second down and goal. He's going to take it from the shotgun. Hide in for the touchdown. Carlos Hyde. We said he was going to have to carry some of the load tonight. That's his third rushing touchdown of the year. Seventy five yards in three plays most of it Braxton Miller. Hyde did the final damage. Basil in for the point after. Up and good. Ten forty nine remaining in the half. Braxton Miller. What price did he pay for that long run. That's the question mark. But with Guyton at the controls Hyde goes airborne. Seventeen fourteen. Coach Meyer at that pep rally last night. Now they're fired up for homecoming here. Over 100,000 in the horseshoe, and they've seen an exciting game so far. 17 14. Basil to kick. Amir Abdullah and Kenny Bell are back deep. Abdullah will camp under this one at the four. And he is plastered again before he gets to the 15 yard line. I think Braxton Miller's okay. Yeah. He's talking to the guys upstairs. After that run, he limped off. But remember a year ago, Holly talked about it in the pregame. He went down hard on a late hit out of bounds. There's his ankle turning. Well, and they had, before he got hurt, 265 yards of offense, 21 points. And uh, as soon as he went out, 41 yards the rest of the game. Yeah. And that was the difference in the game. Abdullah in the backfield with Martinez. Ohio State creeps up. At one point, at about eight in the box. Shifting on that front. And here's Abdullah. And only about two yards before he's wrestled down. And let's check in with Holly. Well, checking out Braxton Miller here on the sideline, the athletic training staff has given him some kind of an oral medication. He's really messing around, kind of stretching out his left leg. He's been up and down, running, jumping up and down, but he's smiling on the bench. He talked to some of his teammates. He told them he was okay. Um, I think the bigger issue is the great big giant mittens he's wearing on his hands, guys. I mean, it's not even that cold out here. Do you see how big those mittens are? There's Martinez firing high, and uh, it was caught. By another one. And Braxton's from the state of Ohio also. He's not like a Florida kid who yeah. thinks it's kind of cold tonight. <laughs> He's from Huber Heights. And we got the heaters down there just in case. Big third down here for the Ohio State defense. Martinez deep intercepted. Buckeyes have got it back. It's Roby for the second time tonight. Roby just sits on this route. I mean, he is reading the quarterback. It's not man, it's zone. Roby is going to sit on the route, read Martinez, makes contact with the receiver, and then plays the football. The ball is thrown inside. The receiver, Kenny Bell, moved outside. And Roby reads it the whole way. Miss, misfire, miscommunication between Martinez and Bell. And Roby with his second pick of the night. Said it was a big play for the Buckeye defense. It was a huge play for the Buckeye defense. Braxton Miller in there, quarterback at the 20-yard line. Carlos Hyde, short game, got a couple. Stein Cooler 
Kind of submarined him down there from the defensive front of Nebraska. What did Tim Beck tell us last night? He says, you know, when we don't turn the ball over, we are really an efficient offense. I mean, the best in the Big Ten, but these turnovers have been a consistent problem for Nebraska all year. They came in minus three on the season, and they're minus the first half here tonight again. Second down and eight. At the 18. Miller off play action throws on the run wide open tight end touchdown. Hireman for the score. Eighteen yard touchdown pass. Well, Hireman was lined up in the slot. He's right here. He's going to come in motion to slip out in the flat and nobody picks him up. It's a bootleg play action and nobody picks up Hireman as he comes out of the backfield. And that's an easy read for Braxton Miller. Drew Basil in to try to give Ohio State the four point lead. Does. Just under nine minutes remaining in the first half. Bradley Roby having himself a night. Courtesy of Taylor Martinez, Aaron throws. Roby, second interception right there. And then the quarterback to his tight end, Hireman for the score. Buckeyes in front. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Great shot of the horseshoe, packed for homecoming tonight. Only on the 11th night game in Ohio Stadium history. Turnovers will kill you. 14 points Ohio State scored off turnovers. And in fact, they've scored 14 unanswered points in the last minute, 51 seconds. Base of the kick. And this one. Four yards deep, Abdullah will not bring it out. Let's head out to a sports center right now, though, with Robert Flores. Robert. All right, Brad, we're approaching the bottom of the hour. This sports center right now brought to you by HP. We'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching South Carolina and Georgia. Number six, Gamecocks all over the number five, Bulldogs, 28-0 third quarter. Marcus Lattimore, the touchdown run. Connor Shaw has also thrown for touchdowns. South Carolina in control. Brad. Wow, Gamecocks. 28 nothing yep. on Georgia. Well, we knew about their defense. You know, the, the thing was with Connor Shaw outplay Aaron Murray and the explosive Georgia offense, and obviously they've done that. First and ten, Nebraska trailing now. Movement. Left tackle move for Nebraska. They're going to start back five yards behind again. Brent Qualley. Ball start. Offense. Number 76. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Nebraska, four penalties all on the offensive side of the football. Doesn't make a defensive-minded coach like Bo Pelini any happier that it's on the offense. First and 15. The last snap was going to be a play action. This is going to be another penalty marker and there's movement again Ohio State was showing blitz ball start offense number 71 10 yard penalty it remains first down Ohio State right now is playing off of the energy of the crowd the momentum of the game and that time they were up jumping around the line of scrimmage trying to create that penalty and they did First down and 20 now. Burkhead might have gotten three. Hankins made first contact. We talked about the turnovers. I mean, just a, a few moments ago, it felt like Nebraska was in control of this game. Their offensive line was getting movement. They were running the football. But interceptions and turnovers that lead to points have turned this game around. Bradley Roby with those two interceptions. They've been huge. 
Hankins is the guy that's down I think he was the one that made the tackle and he's going to come off. Big guy to Dearborn Heights Michigan. Yeah, he's a junior. He's actually listed by Todd McShay as one of the top defensive linemen, top five guys for potentially the NFL next year. And you got Simon and Williams and Go Gilmore, the seniors in there. Michael Bennett comes in to take Hankins' spot on the front wall. Play action, Martinez. Oh, he got leveled as he got rid of the ball, but it's complete on the run to Kenny Bell. And Bell stays in bounds. Stiff arm. Flags are down. This could be an offensive face, face mask. mask. As Kenny Bell was trying to go for the stiff arm, he may have got his hand on the face mask. A tremendous effort and really a beautiful throw by Martinez under pressure because Roby was coming to his backside on the corner blitz. 75 yard pick. We, we have a flag back here. Might have been roughing the passer after the throw. As you said, Roby came off that corner and really laid it on Martinez, but the throw was on target. And then Kenny Bell did the rest, and he's shaken up after landing at about the five-yard line. Let's see if these are offsetting penalties or what we've got. We've got one flag down back inside the 10. The other one was at the end of the play. We have multiple fouls on the play, both on the defense. We have personal fouls. So they call a face mask on Christian Bryant of Ohio State, not on Kenny Bell. Well, first of all, you got Roby, number one, coming on the corner blitz. I don't know if Martinez saw him or not, but he hung in there and took it and made a beautiful throw in the post route to Kenny Bell, who beat the safety, Orion Johnson. And then here's the end of the play. One stiff arm and the second stiff arm. Boy, I thought he had the face mask. I did, too. <laughs> Burke had the tailback. He's going to get the carry. Burkhead, nothing there. Great job by Travis Howard to stick his nose in there. No gain for Burkhead. Or if he had a gain, it was very little. Again, one time, one more time at the end of the play. That looks like the face mask to me. That was a face mask by Bell, and that was a face Oop, mask by that's Bell. That's a double that's face a mask. Double face there you mask. Go. <laughs> he got away with two, and Ohio State didn't get away with any. Going to have a full house back field here again and now Burkhead's going to come up and take the snap they've used this twice for touchdowns on pitches to Abdullah and that time he fumbled that's what Todd was talking about taking your tail back and putting him under center and that time he dropped it see the reason when you get inside the five yard line the center usually has to make a reach block false start offense number 76 five yard penalty it remains second down if your center is reaching to make a block and he's moving one way, you've got to stay with him. That time, I don't think the center snapped it no, on time. It didn't. The left guard hit him. There was movement in the penalty. The center didn't move, and that's why they bobbled the snap. Justin Jackson didn't snap it. He just got run over by the left guard. Second down and goal. Wide receivers, three of them to the top from the nine-yard line. Martinez, quarterback draw all the way. Martinez breaks one tackle, breaks another, and he's in. Wow, what a run. Touchdown, Nebraska. Nine-yard pinball job by Taylor Martinez, who just wouldn't go down. Well, if you have any questions about how tough Taylor Martinez is, all you got to do is put the tape on of this drive. First of all, he takes the hit from Roby on the corner blitz and delivers the throw to Bell. And on this play, it looks like he's going to get stopped short of the end zone. He breaks two or three tackles and gets it in for the touchdown. Meyer in for the point after. Seesaw game. Seesaw's back in Nebraska's favor. 24-21. 6.59 remaining. A 75-yard drive in less than two minutes. The play that got him here was the long throw to Bell, but he took a vicious hit to deliver it. And then he did it on his own on the design quarterback draw, breaks three tackles, and Nebraska's back on top.
Time now with just under seven minutes remaining in the half. Ah, Affleck. For our Affleck trivia question. Urban Meyer, the third Ohio State coach to start his career 5-0. and oh. Who are the other two? Think it over. We'll give you an uh, answer shortly. Boy, was he excited last week. I don't think I've ever seen him more excited for a win. His first in the Big Ten, the 17-16 survival against Michigan State. We well, described it like two sledgehammers going at each other, <laughs> and that's the kind of game it was. And uh, a victory that this Ohio State football team really needed from a morale standpoint. It's Rod Smith, one of the two men back deep with Bryante Dunn. Devin Smith not in the kick return capacity the last couple of times and uh, probably a wise choice that Rod Smith's going to take a knee. Well, Braxton Miller is is waking up a little bit had the big long run had to come out you know, last week again 315 yards of total offense but he had to leave the game twice. This was early in the game hit out of bounds he actually got hit harder by the box yeah. than he did the player and then this one he ended up fumbling this. This looked like it could have been a serious injury. Looked like his knee. It ended up being his hip. And he's had to leave the game once tonight. So you, you got to play that balance of giving him the football but protecting him too. Here he's going to try to throw on first down and does. Out in the flat. Across the 35 is Billy Brown. And it's going to be a first down pick of a 13. You see how wary the Nebraska defenders are of rushing him because there were two guys that could have really gone aggressively at him for a sack, but they didn't want to get beat, and he ends up making the completion. And now it's Hyde in the middle of the pack. Four or five for him. The Ohio State with their new offensive coordinator Tom Herman that they go no huddle it's not always hurry up but it's no huddle this time it is pretty quick though and Hyde stood up before he could get to the first down Will Compton the middle linebacker who made so many hits against Wisconsin last week in on that stuff the reason you go no huddle is to make the defense stay on the field and maybe be a little bit more vanilla. Ohio State hasn't picked up a third down tonight. They have one now. At the six minute mark, on third and one, they got two. There's Tom in the uh, red hat. Another one of those young offensive coordinators was at Iowa State the last three years. Was at Rice before that. Very similar philosophy offensively. That Urban Meyer has, and uh, it's a good hire by Urban. Iowa State beat TCU today, didn't they? <laughs> Braxton Miller scrambling, heads for the far side, he's got some room, and a nice run. And we have a flag at the end of a 16 yard pickup. This is going to be on Ohio State. Yeah, Evan a Spencer, hit. a wide receiver with a late block. Normally, you see that penalty thrown on a late hit on the quarterback right. running to the sideline, but this was on a late block. What a beautiful play. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit, number 16 in the offense, 15-yard penalty. The play resulted in a first down. So first down but basically they lose all the yardage anyway because yeah. it's coming back. Well, Braxton Miller feels the corner blitz coming from the opposite side but he can't get to him. He still is able to elude people with that shiftiness and there's the late block on Compton. It wasn't too devastating but well after the play and well after Miller was out of bounds and if you're going to protect a quarterback on the sideline you have to protect those other guys as well. So it's first down but it's basically back where they started. Philly Brown joins the backfield play action Miller deep middle got a man tight end Van Ett. Braxton Miller warming up his arm pickup of 32. Well the tight ends lined up right here and the safeties and the linebackers are going to react to the play fake watch them all draw in with the run fake and the tight end runs right by him on the outside Van Ett. 
Nice strike to the tight end and it's back in the red zone for Ohio State at the 19. And now Hyde for a couple. Sean Fisher in on the stop along with P.J. Smith from the secondary. So wow we have had some offense in this yeah. one. We still have not had many called or designed runs for Braxton Miller from the quarterback position. He's had two. One of them was a big one that set up a touchdown. Could be a good spot for one right here. Red zone has been perfect. 15 straight 13 touchdowns and a couple of field goals coming into tonight. And here's Braxton Miller. Oh boy. If he breaks that tackle. He might score but he didn't break the tackle of Alonzo Whaley. Alonzo Whaley played extremely well last week in the Wisconsin game nine tackles. The biggest one was on a key fourth down play in Wisconsin's last drive. And you're right he stops a touchdown potentially there. Third down and four as everybody looks over to the Ohio State sideline. Right here if this is a pass and you're Nebraska you got to be careful how you rush Braxton Miller. Play action rolling left one and a throw now he's going to tuck it down and get what he can and it's a first down. And it's first and goal. Nice call by Tom Herman moving him out of the pocket anticipating a little pressure and getting him outside where he has a run pass option and Braxton Miller makes a first down. They go quickly and Hyde taking it to the corner touchdown. Seven yards untouched. That time the tempo really worked for Ohio State because they completely outflanked the Nebraska defense. Nebraska did not have enough defenders over there to stop the run. Drew Basil in for the point after. Another long scoring drive by Ohio State and our fourth lead change. Buckeyes go back up 28 24. They've used tempo some. Look, there's just not enough defenders here to, to stop this run. They go hurry up. Nebraska doesn't get enough guys on that side of the formation, and it's an easy waltz into the end zone for Hyde. Carlos Hyde, one of our impact players tonight, and his third. Touchdown. I make it fourth touchdown of the year in the second of the night. A one yarder and a seven yarder. So back and forth we go. And still 3-11 remaining in the half. Nebraska's only got two of its timeouts remaining. Is though. this a Pac-12 game or a Big say, Ten game? Know. What do we got going on here? <laughs> we, had, we had nothing going there for a while. We couldn't get a first down, and now we've got the scoreboard kind of whirring. From the three yard line. Amir Abdullah trying to get to the edge. Flags are down all over the place. They are flying in from every direction. We might have more than one penalty. That's maybe why we've got so many flags. Same guy got both penalties. The first foul was number 16. <laughs> That's hard to do. Go. They just correct. OK. Me. One was on 16. <laughs> one was on 32. That's good to say. That's just a rough <laughs> rough return if you get two on the same guy. Well there's the hold by cross number 32. Yeah he had a handful of jersey. Yeah. Even the red gloves didn't help. No. Him. 
So Nebraska in a bit of a hole here at their own 10 yard line. Got to be smart if you're Taylor Martinez. You got a lot of football game left. Don't turn the ball over again in this end of the field. Keeps it and he lost it again just like Todd was talking about. I think Nebraska got back on top of it. Wow. You no more than got that sentence out of your mouth that he put it on the ground well, again. You can just feel it. I mean, coming into the game, this is a team that was 5-1 and one, but had 15 fumbles coming into the game. Now, they didn't lose all of those. A lot of them were just like that. They fumble them and get them back, but you just got to take care of the football. They'd lost more than anybody else in college football. Almost lost that one. Ben Cotton saved them. And now Burkhead trying to bounce it off that initial contact at the line of scrimmage. And he probably got three yards. So we approach two minutes remaining in the half. Right now, Nebraska just like to get a first down or so. And if they have to punt it, that's great. Yeah. But they've got third down and nine right here. And now do they put it in the air with a quarterback whose confidence has got to be shaken by two earlier interceptions. He might run quarterback draw right here. The three wideouts are to Martinez left. He's going to flare it the other way to Burkhead who broke one tackle but not the other ones. Good job by Christian Bryant the safety getting over there quickly reading the little flare pass. It was a safe throw for Martinez hoping maybe he breaks a tackle and converts it to a first down but Bryant was having none of it. Now this is an interesting situation because Ohio State takes a timeout. They want to preserve some time here. They want to preserve some time and also they may go after this punt. I think one of the areas that they are very good at it. and the Urban Meyer coach teams have been good at is blocking punts. They he's, got one last week against Michigan State. And he's had a lot over his career at Bowling Green Utah yeah. and Florida every place he's been they've been able to do that and this is a good spot to come after yeah. a guy. And, and when they've done it in since 2005 when they blocked a punt they're 17 and 0 in yeah. those games and it's interesting his philosophy he puts a lot of speed on this punt rush team all these guys in there are wide receivers or defensive backs. Now nobody's out wide right now. Nebraska has a guy out wide and nobody's covering him. Out there at the 12 yard line. Nobody down there as you see. Urban Myers trying to get somebody over there. They come out late. And the punts away. It's a good one. But it's returnable. Devin Smith. No return yardage on that one. He danced around a little bit but he didn't get anything on the return. So Ohio State up by four with a minute 27 remaining and a couple of timeouts. Well. We asked you earlier our Athlac trivia question. Uh, Urban Meyer, the third Ohio State coach to start his career 5 0. Who were the other two? Well, back in 44, Carol Biddos and Earl Bruce in 1979. Well, one thing we haven't seen yet is Ohio State take a shot down the field to Devin Smith. He's up here at the top. First and 10. Play action. Deep ball from Miller overshot his tight end Nick Vanette. Van Vanette had a half step back there. And you know, we answered that Affleck question Earl Bruce one of those guys he was in the football building. I saw him on Friday and actually his grandson is one of Urban Meyer's assistant coaches Zach Smith is a wide receiver coach and uh, he was with Urban for five years down at Florida. Very sharp young coach. Earl Bruce, the head coach, when Bo Pelini, Nebraska's coach, was a player here. Actually played for Coach Bruce and John Cooper. Second and ten. Little misdirection. Braxton just fakes one way and runs the other. And he's down inside the 40. Well, this was a design quarterback run again. It's a quarterback counter. That's what that little hop was. It's a little counter step to allow the back to get in front of it. They pull the backside guard. They lead with the back. And that is a quarterback counter run all the way. 100 yards rushing for Miller. Wants to loft one here and throws it away. Bring up second down. 
and 59 seconds remaining. And coming up on the Northwestern Mutual halftime report, John and Jesse will have all the day's big highlights and scores. Good to have John back in the saddle. So still two timeouts remaining for the Buckeyes trying to score again here before halftime. I know I've said it already but again Devin Smith he's a guy who will go up and make a play for you on the football. Looks at him this time long ball almost pulled it in one handed and we have seen him pull in a pass yeah. one handed this year for sure. He's been the downfield threat and you know you're going to get a lot of bump and run and one on one shots and it's a good decision to take a shot at him. The defender didn't see the football. Not able to convert though. There's a four wide receiver grouping in there now for the Buckeyes. Basil really hasn't been tested as a field goal kicker this year but they need to get him quite a bit of yardage here to give him a shot I think. Third down and ten. Watch the draw. Blitz coming. Miller buys himself some time. Throws low but caught by Corey Brown. Philly Brown and picked up nine yards. Now is that enough to give their field goal unit a crack at it here? Urban Myers going. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The clock's winding down to 30 seconds. And Hyde into the middle of the pile got a first down. I think Bo Pelini called timeout though before the snap. He was over on the sideline and he called timeout before the fourth down play was snapped. Well, that's big. I actually thought Urban Meyer might call timeout to decide what he wanted to do on fourth and short. Instead, it was Bo Pelini wanted to make sure his defense reset was the game set. Clock to 31 seconds. So they put it back to 31, where it'll be fourth and one. Now with the extra time to this think is about it. This a 30-second timeout. Does Urban Meyer decide to kick here? Because now the element of surprise and going with the quick count is gone. So Nebraska now is going to get the defensive personnel they want on the field, get themselves set the way they want, and the element of surprise is no longer there. Basil's longest field goal issue has only been 26 yards, so they really haven't tested him. His career long is 47. And that's about what we're looking at right now if they decide to kick. I think Urban Myers feels, you know what? I think I'd rather have the ball in number five's hands and see if we can pick up fourth and two as opposed to trying to kick one from this distance. Big fourth down and one. Miller follows his blockers. He might have six points out of this. Touchdown. The gamble pays big dividends. 31 yards for Miller. Touchdown. Extra point is good. Didn't need Basil as a field goal kicker. They just needed him as an extra point kicker after Miller scores. Well, not only did the timeout give the defense time to think, it also gave the offense time to think. They went right back to the counter play. He follows the guard and Carlos Hyde. They've got a big run out of it earlier. Beautiful execution. And instead of just getting the first down on fourth and short, they get a touchdown. You know, when they went hurry up on fourth down, they gave it to Carlos Hyde trying to get the first down. Timeouts called by Pelini. He changes his defense. Tom Herman changes his offense, and they get a touchdown. 57 yards in just six plays and a little over a minute. And now Braxton Miller, 137 yards on 10 carries. Not a happy coach on the Nebraska sideline.
If you're just joining us and you're looking at the score, it's not wrong. Our graphics department is perfect. It's 35 to 24 here in the Big Ten. In the second quarter. <laughs> Line drive kick. One of the up man had it in his hands, and now he's just got it covered at the 25. With 20 seconds remaining. BCS countdown is on ESPN and ESPNU this Sunday. Analysis breakdown, our analysts rather, break down the key victories and defeats that took place on the gridiron and discuss their impact on the standing. BCS countdown, 8.30, then at 9, presented by Discover Card tomorrow on ESPN and ESPNU. Terrell Martinez and the Huskers now down yeah. 11 well, after being up earlier in this quarter. They're going to take a knee here. They get the ball to start the third quarter because they deferred to start the game. First quarter belonged to Nebraska. Second quarter definitely belonged to the Buckeyes. 35 first half points for Ohio State and Urban Meyer's got to be happy about that. He's with Holly. Well, Coach, Nebraska calls a timeout, and you kind of reconfigured your plan on fourth and one. Why did you decide for Braxton to take that play? Oh, we, we didn't reconsider really anything. That was He's our guy, and uh, guys are playing well, though. I mean, we started slow, but Braxton's our best, you know, one of our best players, so let him run. He started to run, but then it started to open up things for other people in the passing game. Why was that? Well, anytime you have an athletic quarterback, they're going to sink someone. The one thing you can guarantee is they're going to have a player for Braxton. That opens up the play-action game a little bit. All right, thanks, Coach. The lead at halftime, and when Irvin's got the lead, he almost never loses. 35-24 Buckeyes as we send it to the studio. John Saunders and Jesse Palmer for the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. Partner, I don't remember the last time we did a Big Ten game where there was 59 <laughs> points in the whole game. We yeah. still got two quarters to go. It would be a lot closer if it wasn't for the turnovers. Yeah, you know, just a couple impressions. For Nebraska, their offense, the two turnovers led to touchdowns. One was a, a pick six. Six offensive penalties, a couple sacks allowed. They've been their own worst enemy. Yeah. The other impression, Braxton Miller got off to a slow start. He is special. I mean, Ohio State had five explosive plays, either runs of 12 or more, or passes of 20. Braxton Miller, all of them. He had four runs. He had one big pass. I mean, he's the most dynamic player on the Ohio State team, and he finished that half in a very strong fashion. We'll have to see if Nebraska's got an answer for him here in the second half. They're going to get the football first, the Cornhuskers, that is, as Basel will kick. And this one will be returnable from the four, Amir Abdullah. And again, they don't let him get out with any kind of running room. As we check in, third member of our team is Holly. Well, checking in with Nebraska coach Bo Pelini, guys, he was very terse. One word answers. I asked him, what do they have to do a better job with Braxton Miller? He said, execute. But they haven't been themselves, guys. They were trying to do a man and a half on him in that first half. But their nickel, Siante Evans, has an injury. Not sure if he'll be able to return. Keep your eye on that. All right, Holly, thank you. As we start the third quarter at the 23-yard line. Three wide outs all to the top of your screen for Taylor Martinez. And he's going to throw maybe. Goes that way. Had an open man, but he missed him. Well, he had pressure from Hankins again. Remember, Holly reported they adjusted that knee brace, and he was good to go. And that first play of the third quarter, he was right bearing down on Taylor Martinez. And I don't think Martinez got his feet set because of it. It was Jamal Turner who appeared to be open, but he couldn't get it to him. So it's second down and ten. Play action to Burkett. And now Martinez deep middle, and this time he's got it to Kenny Bell. And Bell out to midfield. Well, what a beautiful catch by Kenny Bell. I mean, he anticipated that the safety, Bryant, was going to give him a shot after the catch. Watch him just reach up and snatch the ball out of the air with his hands. He knew the safety was coming, but he didn't let that ball get into his body where it might get knocked out. He grabbed it with his hands. Abdullah and Burkett both in the backfield here, but it's another play fake. And down the sideline, another strike. And that's to Hurd out of the backfield. Yep, little wheel route out of the backfield. Nebraska came out running the ball to start the game, coming out throwing the ball here to start the second half. So back-to-back -back plays of 28 and then 20 yards, and they're going again without a huddle. 
as they've got it inside the 30 yard line. Burkhead got the corner, got a blocker in front. Burkhead still on his feet all the way to the five yard line. Boy, Nunwa is quite a blocker. And Kyler Reed, the tight end out there leading as well. Watch number 25 and watch number 18 out here on the perimeter. Wide receivers blocking downfield. Kyler Reed and Nunwa both get big blocks. And Burkhead is able to take it all the way inside the five yard line because of it. And he's hurt on the sideline as he got into the five. Remember, he only played in about eight snaps of the season opener before he was hurt. And then it was three games before he came back, uh, two games before he came back. He looks like he's in a lot of pain. Yeah, he sure does. I don't know if it was right on the landing at the end of the run. He got it down. Got a nice block right there. And then as he sprinted down the sideline, dragged down and grabbed his left knee, I think, which has a brace on it or a sleeve already. And we'll try to check on the star tailback, the senior out of Plano, Texas, when we come back. Burkhead's left knee over there on the sideline. Meanwhile, he's the guy that got him this close. First and goal, opening drive, third quarter for Nebraska. It's Martinez keeping this time, and he didn't gain anything. Well, John Simon made yeah. the stop. Well played by Simon. You know, that's one of those plays. It's kind of a slow developing read play. Martinez tries to keep that ball in the belly of the back as long as he can to get a reaction out of the defensive end. And Simon played it perfectly. Of course, Burkhead out, but Amir Abdullah has a couple touchdowns already tonight. And it's nice to have him in that backfield if you don't have Burkhead. And here he comes. A little different style of runner maybe than Burkhead. He got it to the three, and it's third down to go. And remember, the thing that they did so well in that first half was with Burkhead taking the snap and pitching yeah. to Abdullah. That part of the goal line offense is out right now. Now do they roll Martinez out maybe here and give him an option to throw yeah. a run? I think that's what you have to do. Utilize his skill. Third down and goal. Throws touchdown to the tight end Ben Cotton. What an impressive opening march by the Cornhuskers. Tell you what, this is quick twitch muscle response by Taylor Martinez. Watch him double clutch on this. He's going to get the ball and look in, and it's not there, but he quickly reloads when it does open up. It wasn't open at first. It opened up late, and he got it on the second time. Brett Maher in for the point after. And it's up and good. And we're back to a four point game 35 31. Ohio State in front. Did they lose Rex Burkhead for the rest of the night or maybe worse? He did most of the work on that 77 yard march to get him down close. And Taylor Martinez, who threw a couple interceptions earlier, has got a touchdown pass now to the tight end. Looking in on the horseshoe, our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Nebraska offense driven down the field in 77 yards and seven plays to make it a four-point game again. In the first half, they had 15 first down plays. They only threw two of them. That drive, they threw two plays, or two of the four first down plays, they threw the football, and they moved it right down the field. Maher to kick. Bryante Dunn and Rod Smith wait on the other end. It'll be Rod Smith from about a yard deep. Smith. 
Had a little avenue. Tripped up though as he got out near the 25 yard line. Let's see what we can get from Holly on Burkhead. Well, Nebraska doesn't give injury updates. So what I have observed with Rex Burkhead is they took off his neoprene brace and his heavy knee brace and examined that left knee. It is the same knee where he sprained his MCL. It took him a while to get it off, examine it, but they have put everything back on and now he is trotting along the sideline here. Tough trying kid. to see if he's able to, guys, but I, I don't know what they're telling him yet, but it does look good because the brace is back on. Okay, Holly, thanks. Another 100-yard rushing game already with 119 tonight, highlighted by a 73-yarder in the first half. Carlos Hyde's going to take a direct snap here and a wild Buckeye offense. First time we've seen that tonight. Picked up six. And again, Ohio State goes with a hurry up. Haven't aimed one at Stoneburner in a long time in this ball game. And Devin Smith still held without a catch. Yep. That was Stoneburner there in the slot to the top. Second down at four. Hyde straight up the middle, and he's got the first down. Chase Rome made the hit, but Carlos Hyde, who's got a couple of touchdowns tonight, has a first down there. Nothing real fancy with Carlos Hyde. I mean, he's going to hit it up in there. He's a 230-pound back. Runs north and south. Doesn't really try to make people miss. Had over 100 yards against the Huskers last year in the game in Lincoln. Yep. And now it's going to be Hyde again, taking the direct snap. Trying to cut it outside, and now it goes back the other way. And good gain again. So you wonder, now why would you do that? Braxton Miller ran for 137 yards in the first half. Well, when the quarterback position runs, you get extra blockers. And by taking Braxton Miller out of it, you save a couple hits on his body. Because you figure, you know what, the way this game's going, we're going to need him fresh in the fourth quarter. Right. We still want to run quarterback run, but let's save his body a couple hits if we can here in the third quarter. Uh, he's back in the gun on um, second down at five. Rides it to Hyde and then brings it the other way. And there's one of those hits Todd was talking about after a pickup of three. Holly? Well, Rex Burns had tried to take a couple of cuts on the sideline when he did some lateral movement. He was in a great deal of pain. He came back to the athletic trainer and let out an expletive, pulled off his straps off his helmet. They've got him on the bike trying to warm that knee up, guys, but he did not look good trying to take those cuts. They told us in that season opener he thought he could come back too and it did much the same thing. He felt the little twinge in there when he tried to cut and warm up and that was it for him in that season opener Rod Smith in the lineup as a fourth wide receiver on third down and two but it's Braxton Miller all the way and Miller oh luckily Will Compton held on or that might have been a big gainer Nebraska tried to sneak an extra safety down into the box, anticipating a quarterback run, but they weren't able to get to Miller before he got the first down. They had an extra defender down there. Miller was able to still pick up the first. I think if Compton wouldn't have got him, Todd, he's yeah. off to the races. Five minutes into the third quarter, 146 yards on the ground for Braxton Miller tonight. This time, play action wants to throw and does deep sideline incomplete almost picked off by Gene Batiste yeah they had a shot because you could see with the safety walking down in to stop the run that left man-to-man -man coverage on his favorite target Devin Smith but I think that ball was a little bit underthrown by Braxton Miller really the best throws he makes are the deep ball that one was a little bit underthrown and thrown a little too far to the inside so second down at 10 Miller in an empty backfield from midfield. Throws on the run, man open, wide open in the flat. Philly Brown, and he's got 13 or 14. Josh Mitchell made the tackle. Philly Brown had 12 catches a week ago up in East Lansing against the Spartans. 
this this play is a hard one to defend because Braxton Miller's coming right down the line like it's an option like he's going to run and throws it without dropping back. So he's very close to the line of scrimmage. You got to respect the run and then he makes the nice little throw on the out route. Those 12 catches last week the most by a wide receiver for Ohio State in the last 15 years. Eighth play of the drive here and a first and 10 for the Buckeyes at the 36 of Nebraska. Play action down the middle, got a man, tight end to the one is Hyman. Again, the running plays allow you to kind of slip guys behind the defense. They've got to honor the run fake. The linebackers come up, the safeties come up, and the tight end slips behind. And Hyde's not going to get to the goal line. Went airborne, and it was met in midair. And stop for no gain. Urban Meyer saying, let's go. Brings in his fullback. Zach Boren. Ball right at the one-yard line. Second down and goal after that 35-yard pass to Hireman. And in for the third time tonight is Carlos Hyde. Touchdown, Ohio State. And Zach Moore, the fullback, led the way. Talk about answering with a drive of their own for the Buckeyes after what Nebraska did with their opening march. Extra point up and good. Braxton Miller warmed up his arm on that drive. Got it down to Hireman and then gave it to Carlos Hyde for his third score of the night. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. For a team that started off with 13 plays and 17 yards, <laughs> the last five drives for Ohio State, all touchdowns, and those 31 plays encompass 317 yards. Partner. Unbelievable. Wow. Well, you know, and Urban Meyer, when he was the head coach at Florida, went up against Bo Pelini, who was a defensive coordinator at LSU for about three years. Yep. So a lot of familiarity with each other. And right now, uh, Bo Pelini and John Papuch is having a hard time figuring out how to slow down Braxton Miller and the Buckeyes. Lauren Huskers kick return has not accomplished much tonight. Let's see if they do here. Abdullah from the eight yard line. Nope, still only got to the 20 and that's about it. I really like what Urban Meyer has done with this. He, he has kicked it to a certain direction every single time. And they've had all their guys cover. They've done a really nice job on Abdullah on Thursday's practice. It was supposed to be a five minute period on kickoff coverage. They ended up going 20 minutes and Urban Meyer was hands on. He's got seven true freshmen on his kickoff coverage team and they were going piece by piece play by play guy by guy and it's paid off tonight in their coverage. Let's see if Nebraska can answer with a touchdown drive of their own. They fake it to Abdullah Martinez is in trouble. Down he goes inside the 10 and it's Storm Klein storming in there to get the sack. Let's check in with Robert Flores. All right, Brad, AT&T All-America Player of the Week nominee. It is West Virginia running back Andrew Bowie. Career-high effort today against the Texas Longhorns. 208 yards, two touchdowns as West Virginia goes into Austin and they beat the Texas Longhorns by three points. You can become part of the process texting vote to 34760. Martinez quarterback draw and he just got drawn in by John Simon. Oh, this is a bust. I mean John Simon is a guy who plays hard and plays with great effort and energy but this is a bad job. Here's Simon he's just going to come right inside on the draw and not be blocked. I mean nobody blocked him. That's a bust by the right tackle Andrew Rodriguez letting John Simon go right by him and hit his quarterback. And now wouldn't want to be Taylor Martinez as he's under center on a third down and 25.
Wants to throw, being chased from behind, and now he'll tuck it and cuts back to the middle of the field and really took a shot as he got out across the 25-yard line. Garrett Goble let him have it. Well, nice job by Martinez, at least giving his punter some room to work. I mean, he had to get away from pressure. Simon was in there on him again, forced him out of the pocket, but at least he bought some room to try to help the field position battle here. So Maher to punt. He does both duties, the kicker and the punter. Corey, Philly Brown is back deep. Brown will backpedal and take this one at the 25. With the 35 and now into the open field. Down the sideline, Philly Brown, gone, touchdown. Turn for the touchdown. Basil for the point after. Perfect. The key to this return, it was a low kick, and they also, Ohio State, made the decision to double Kenny Bell. Now, it's only one defender there, but as he runs down, they're going to get another defender on him. They're going to double the gunner coming down, and that's the way they were returning it with Brown. They tie up Kenny Bell, and Philly Brown draws the rest. Excellent execution on the punt return team by Ohio State. Philly Brown's longest punt return before that one to this season, 10 yards. And that one's 76, and now the Buckeyes have scored on offense. They've scored on defense. They've scored on special teams. Well, if you're a Nebraska fan at home watching, you say, well, last week we watched our team down 17 in the third quarter and come back. It was Guess the what? second biggest <laughs> comeback in school history. Their biggest comeback in school history was last year against Ohio State. They're going to have to relive those moments tonight now as they trail by 18. Basil the kick. Uh, near Abdullah and Jamal Turner now are the return men. Abdullah. He's having a hard time making the 20-yard line tonight. This is just excellent kickoff coverage by Ohio State. Coverage of Monday Night Football. Monday night gets underway. Monday night countdown served by Applebee's. Starts at 6.30, then at 8.30. Undefeated Texans, led by Arian Foster, take on Mark Sanchez and the Jets. We're looking to get back on track after a disappointing week four loss. Monday night football, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Matty Schaub and Mark Sanchez. Schaub having a great year and one of only two undefeated teams right now in the NFL. And it's Matt Ryan and the Falcons, the other one that's still undefeated. Martinez. Plenty of time, throws it out in the flat to Abdullah. And Amir gets about eight yards out to the 28. Rex Burkhead still working it. Got a smile on his face now, that's a good sign, maybe. He is a tough competitor. He would love to get back out there, try to help this 18-point deficit. The throw complete. Out to Jamal Turner, and he's got a first down. Turner's a guy that they want to get more involved in the offense for the passing game. Yeah. He was a dual threat quarterback in high school, played wide receiver last year, and made some plays, but has a much better understanding of the position now. Taylor Martinez has hit seven different receivers now in the ball game. And he's got four of them out there to work with right now. Simon getting in his track stance here. Martinez, tough throw. Whoa, nice catch by Turner. And Turner's going to have another first down. That ball had to get there in a hurry, and he had to catch it in a hurry. Late flag also at the end of the play. Travis Howard had a shot at Turner. 
and missed the tackle and that enabled him to get it upfield for a first down. Bo Pelini having a chat with the headlinesman. Todd Gearlings will give us the call. Anyone. Personal foul. Offense number 21 leading with a helmet. 15 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Stephen Oswald the wide receiver. Well it's the receiver blocking downfield as this towards the end of the play. Ooh. Yeah, he hit him high, that's yep. for sure. Hit Orion Johnson, the safety. Yeah, helmet to helmet crackbacks like that. It yep. wasn't really a crackback, but it was a, a shot to the ear hole for sure. And so they got that call right. Backs it up back to the 31 yard line. Martinez, empty backfield. Throws near sideline. Complete. But number seven, Tariq Allen, nailed by number seven, Travis Howard. That incompletion stops a string of six straights that Martinez has completed. Again, second down and 17. And if you're Martinez right here, you're thinking, how can I get eight or nine to give myself a decent chance on third down? All his receivers are to the near side except the tight end. He's running for his life and goes down the middle, completes it to Kenny Bell. And he got what Todd said, part of it back. And you don't want to come up third and 17. I mean, you're already down 18 in the game. You got to keep this drive going if you can. So get as much as you can on that second down play and give yourself something to work with on third. Nate Williams is the guy that's down. Those tough front four members, senior. And he's a fifth year senior that missed all of last year with a knee issue that. He's an know. Ohio guy too, yeah. Washington Courthouse, Ohio. And he trots off. Washington Courthouse, the hometown of our director, Scott Johnson. That's right. Third down and eight. Blitz coming from Klein. Martinez over the middle. Got his receiver, but he's hit immediately. Jamal Turner by Christian Bryant. Nice job picking up the blitz. Abdullah was in there as the single back. Stepped in, did a nice job on Ryan Shazier. Short of the first down, but think, pretty good pass protection. I think both players thinking about going for this. Well, they changed their mind. Here comes, they thought about it, I think. The punting team was late coming out. Bo wanted a holding call, I think. Uh, Ohio State didn't get it. Maher the kick again. You know what Philly Brown did a few minutes ago. And Ohio State is going to take State a timeout. timeout. This will be a 30 second timeout. With 3 11 remaining in the quarter. Urban Meyer trying to get the Buckeyes off to a 6 and 0 start. Of course, they're not eligible to win the Big Ten title or play in the championship game. But uh, their theory, if they beat everybody, that would be their bowl season, basically. Yeah. And the way they're playing right now, you kind of wonder if there's anybody that can beat them from the conference. After tonight at Indiana, Purdue, the Nittany Lions who won again today. Illinois at Wisconsin and then the big one against Michigan. Boy how about uh, Penn State today Matt McGloin yeah. and he's he is something to watch lately. Now Bill O'Brien has done an outstanding job coaching those guys up. Michael Motti great inspirational leader on the defense. Well they are going for it. Fourth down and two. Martinez 
Pump fakes to the left. Now he's going to try to run for it, and he backed into it, I think, by about a foot. Tough run by yeah. Martinez. He's had a few of those tonight, including a touchdown run. But they keep the drive alive with three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Nate Williams is back in there, by the way. Standing up on that right defensive end spot. Martinez straight drop, throws out of the flat. Kenny Bell, Bell's got 15 more and steps out of bounds. Well, a lot of room out there for Kenny Bell. I mean, he's been their main guy, their big play receiver. Not sure if that was a mistake by the Ohio State secondary or what, but a lot of area, a lot of green space out there for Kenny Bell. It's a three possession game right now, so Nebraska wants to keep this thing moving in a positive direction. Martinez play fake long ball intercepted picked off by Orrin Johnson and Martinez third interception yeah. of the night and for some reason he didn't have to do this because there was not too much pressure he threw the ball off his back foot and because he didn't step into the throw the ball was under throw he, he doesn't get a good follow through. He doesn't step into it well enough. It's underthrown, and the safety Johnson steps in front and makes the interception. That was a problem last year for Martinez, and it resurfaced there. That form that Todd is talking about. And so three picks on the Knights ties a career high. And now Carlos Hyde. Who's had a three touchdown night? Goes out for about five. We've got to fly it down. And we've got a Cornhusker down as well. Be a holding call against Ohio State. In the back. Offense number 44 after distance to the goal repeat first down Zach Moore in the fullback with the block in the back Senior captain comes out and the Buckeye offense backs up to the six So Braxton Miller will take it in the shotgun near his own goal line He'll keep it, and he's got a lot of room in front of him. Braxton Miller knocked down, but not before he got out near the 30. Another 23-yard run by the Ohio State quarterback. Well, he's just got such quick feet and the ability to change directions. He carries out the fake. He plants and moves laterally without losing speed. And then he's a big guy. I mean, he's pretty thick. Breaks arm tackles, and uh, he's not just a good running quarterback. He's a good running back. Now he flushes out of there as a wide receiver. As Carlos Hyde will take the direct snap, kind of bobbled it, and then still got three yards out of it. Let's take a look at tonight's UPS efficiency updates. Braxton Miller, career high rushing total tonight the total offense Braxton Miller 297 tonight Hyde takes it wide a couple yards shy of the first down maybe three yards short in fact Alonzo Whaley made the stop and another penalty marker on the play with a personal foul. And then we're seeing a little frustration on the part of the Nebraska defense. This was away from the play. It was in by the 
where the ball was snapped, not where the end of the run was. Cameron Meredith with a personal foul late hit. And so Ohio State's offense in high gear, and you don't need to give them any freebies. They got a free one there to the 49 yard line. Brown going to set up in that backfield behind Miller, who gives it off, and Hyde got a yard, and that's going to do it for the third quarter in Columbus. 49 31, Buckeyes at homecoming out in front. This presentation of Saturday Night Football presented by Windows will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Our Pacific Life Game Summary as we start the fourth quarter. Braxton Miller, almost 300 yards of offense, career tying interception total for Martinez and the turnovers. They've been living on the edge, Nebraska, in the turnover department, and it's killing them right now. Ohio State begins the fourth with a 49 31 lead and a second down and nine on Nebraska's side of the field. Miller. Cuts back to the near side, fakes the pass, and now gets what he can and gets down. You remember in the very beginning of the game when we talked about the two quarterbacks, we talked about their team was going to count on them to make plays tonight, but just as importantly, taking care of the football. Yep. And, and that's the difference. I mean, both guys have made plays, running it and throwing it. The big difference in the game is that Martinez has thrown the three interceptions, and Braxton Miller has he put the ball on the ground once early. They got it back. But other than that, he's taking care of the football pretty well. Martinez has fumbled once, too, though. It was recovered by one of his teammates. They're down at five. This would be a big stop for Nebraska's defense if they could get it. But they don't because of moves like that. Be fun to be able to do that just yeah. once. See, again, that's not like your typical quarterback running the football. That's like another running back in the backfield. He fakes to one running back, and the other running back keeps it. You know, and it's a little spin move and an easy first down. Compton is their leading tackler. He got blocked by Meward. That's uh, third time tonight, Todd, that he's run for a first down on a third down situation. So he keeps drives alive with those legs of his. Hyde blasts his way through the umpire and lost the ball at the end, though, and it's covered by Thad Randall. So just when we were talking about turnovers against Nebraska, here comes one from Ohio State. I think it was Damian Stafford, the free safety, who was going to come in here late and rip the ball out. A great hard-nosed tough run one that really takes steam out of a defense but just a lack of ball security at the end and a nice play by Stafford that is the break Nebraska needed getting the football back now at their own 17 yard line needing 18 points here and we're down to 13 and a half minutes to go that's Braylon Hurd in the backfield with Martinez three wideouts to the top It'll be heard on the carry. And made one man miss out there on the outside. And nice gain by the sophomore. And he's a Youngstown, Ohio guy, too. Heard they've got they've got some talented backs. I mean, Abdullah, we've seen. Burkhead is out with the injury. They've got Heard. They've got a freshman, Amani Cross, that they're really high on as well. Second down at four. Bird coming the other way and going nowhere. John Simon and Garrett Goble are there to meet him. A guy that's really been quiet for Nebraska tonight that I think is a is a good receiver for them is Kyler Reed, the tight end, number 25, has not been much of a factor tonight so far. He's got a goose egg, hasn't caught a pass. Abdullah back in there now, flanking Martinez in the shotgun. Cornhuskers desperately need this third down. Trying to get back in the game. Martinez 
fires far side. Boy, that one was almost picked off. Travis Howard in coverage on Anunwa. So they got the ball, but they couldn't do anything with it. And they'll have to punt it back to Philly Brown. Not sure what Taylor Martinez was reading on this. I thought he had Kyler Reed running the corner route. He beat his man clean off the ball, and Martinez didn't see him. Last three series for Nebraska, a couple of three and outs and a turnover. And now they punt it away. Brown's going to call for fair catch and get out of the way as it bounces out somewhere between the 35 and the 40. With 12 minutes and 11 seconds remaining, 49-31, Ohio State in front. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Well, when you put up 49 points on the night, you're probably doing it in a variety of ways. First touchdown of the night for Ohio State came on Bradley Roby's interception return for a score of 41 yards. Carlos Hyde has scored three times tonight on the ground. There's the tight end Hagerman from Braxton Miller. And then you get it defense, you get it offense, you kick to Philly Brown, and you get it with special teams on a 76-yard touchdown return on the punt. And now back to Hyde. They just like to eat up some clock yeah. and some ground at the same time here. Well, you do a couple things here. You try to eat up the clock. You try to save your quarterback's body a little bit and not run him unless you absolutely have to with a three-score lead. It's funny, you know, Urban Meyer was telling us they needed Philly Brown to become more of a dynamic player as a receiver. He had yep. those 12 catches last week, but only 84 yards. He wasn't able to break any big plays. We didn't break a big catch tonight, but he sure did on a punt return. He's lined up down to the bottom of your screen on second down and four. Miller taking all the time off the clock he can. He barely got the snap away. Now Hyde blasts through and into the secondary. Carlos Hyde all the way to the 33-yard line. His biggest run of the night. You know, when you watch Braxton Miller and he does his cadence, he doesn't use a verbal cadence. His cadence is a clap. But every now and then he fakes a clap so that he can see what the defense is showing. He changes the play, then he claps, and they run right by where the blitzing linebacker was coming from. Carlos Hyde got up limping at the end of that run, and a 23-yarder for him. And he's over 100 yards in the ground, so both he and Miller with over 100 yards rushing. Boy, they don't want to lose him, too, after already not having Jordan Hall. Yeah. So Rod Smith is in the backfield with Miller. And he's going to get the carry. And Rod Smith broke a tackle, and he's off to the races. Smith, he's going to score. Rod Smith on a 33-yard touchdown. Everybody getting in the act. Nebraska really guessed wrong on that defense, Brad. They took Compton, their middle linebacker, and ran him right out of the middle to blitz from the outside, and they paid the price. Another scoring drive of less than two minutes as the extra point makes it 56 to 31. Buckeyes. Nebraska's leading tackler, number 51, took himself right out of the play. He went to the outside, they ran to the inside, and Rod Smith with the fresh legs gets another touchdown. This Ohio State team that's put 56 on the board came in ranked 12th in the country. They started the season ranked in the preseason polls number 18. Mr. Blackledge, I would guess they're going to be in the top 10 tomorrow with what's going on right yeah, now. I would think so. You know, a couple teams have lost. A couple teams have not been impressive. They've been impressive. And it was a good win on the road last week against East Lansing. And an even better effort going so far tonight. Amir Abdullah around the two. 
And finally, he got a little bit of an opening on a kick return. And got it out across the 30, his best return of the night, as we return to Robert Flores. Robert. All right, Brad, here's what's happening on Sports Center right now, brought to you by HP. Number three, Florida State is leading on the road against NC State, but the Wolf Pack are giving the Seminoles all they can handle. They've sacked EJ Manuel six times, and right now in the fourth quarter, under three minutes to go, the Wolf Pack are driving, and they're down 16 to 10. Looks like one of the ACC. It might shake Florida State up a little bit, even if they win. That might. Uh, Back them up in the polls that we were talking about a minute ago. Play action. Martinez throws out in the flat. Shoestring catch by Janovich, the freshman fullback. And we've got 10 minutes remaining. So Nebraska's got to hustle and go without huddles all the way. The star tailback. Shelved over there on the sideline with a bad knee. And with that, Braylon Hurd is the guy that's in the backfield right now with Martinez. And Martinez keeps it, gets what he can, and slides again awkwardly before Storm Klein could take his head off. Well, if you're Ohio State right now, you don't want to play necessarily prevent defense, but you want to keep everything in front. You don't want to give Taylor Martinez an easy big play for a score. Make him run plays, make him run clock, make him earn everything. Abdullah, he's got a crease. And again, looks like we had a face mask. And there comes the flag. Orion Johnson bringing down Abdullah. That was pretty awesome. All four flags came at the same time. It was like in in unison. <laughs> at the end of the play, the face mask. And they're only Personal about foul. they're only about eight yards face apart mask. too, all of them. Defense number 19, 15-yard penalty, results in a first down. A synchronized flag toss. <laughs> Should be new, in the Olympics. Yeah, new yeah. Olympic sport. Spots it down at the 18. That's what you don't want if you're Ohio State's defense. You give up the big run and then you get the penalty on the end of it. Amani crosses in the backfield for the first time tonight and immediately hit Abdullah. Just got pasted by John Simon again. Boy, he's a football player. Urban Meyer loves him. You know, I mean, he is old school throwback, hard nosed football. He just reads this quickly, gets across the line of scrimmage, and meets Abdullah as soon as Abdullah gets the football. There's nothing the back can do there. Simon, a two-time captain for the Buckeyes, and this is senior season. Martinez, quarterback draw, dropped after a short game by Storm Klein. The last two-time captain for the Buckeyes, 07 and 08, James Laurinaitis. Who was back here tonight? James had a Thursday night win for the Rams, so he got to come back for homecoming. Third down at 16. Martinez fires to the sideline and got it to Turner. Is he in? Yes. Nice job adjusting his body. There's a penalty marker in the backfield. Nice adjustment by Turner. I don't know if that was a throw intended in that spot or Result not. Result of the play is a completed catch. We have a personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 10 of the defense. That will be tacked on half the distance of the goal. First down. So it's going to be first and goal. We'll see the end of the play first as Martinez throws it. Shazier is going to hit him late. Got him in the head with yeah, the helmet. Yeah, a little high. It may have been an intentional back shoulder throw. The the safety on the play, Corey Brown never saw the football. Never got turned around to find it. First and goal just outside the two for Nebraska. I think they're going to review the last play, but I think he was in. It was a heck of a catch. The previous play is under further review. If it was a back shoulder throw, Ledge, I think it's the best throw he's made tonight. Yeah. 
defender out of position. He throws it right to the outside. You only have to have one foot in. I think he had them both. I do too. You see some green there in that yep. left foot before the chalk mark on the sideline. So it's going to be first and goal just inside the three. Maybe they're looking at whether or not he actually uh -huh. controlled the ball, not his feet. Well, John Chorus and the guys in the replay booth will straighten it out for us. We're talking about John Simon, the two time captain, same high school. Youngstown Cardinal Mooney that Bo Pelini went to. Yeah. And Bob Stoops. Bob Stoops, a big win today. Yeah. On the road at Texas Tech. They'll hook up with the Longhorns, who were beaten today. So both Oklahoma and Texas and the Red River rivalry next Saturday will have one defeat. I think it'll still be a sellout, though, don't you? Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and there'll still be some fried food there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was third and 16 at the 24 yard line. The penalty would be half the distance of the goal, so it'd be around the 12 yard line anyway. Otherwise, it's going to be first and goal just outside the two. Those are going to be the differences in the, where we're going to snap this football. And this one's taken a while. They might be doing the math that I just did if it's yeah. going to take this long. They might be trying to decide where to spot it and where the penalty would put it if they decide that uh, it was not a catch. The ruling on the field was a completed pass by the guys up there in the top box Martinez and Jamal Turner. All right, Todd, what do you got? After review, the pass was incomplete. We do have roughing the passer. It will be from the 26-yard line, 15-yard penalty, resulting in a first down. I was close on my math, yeah. but not completely right. Well, and you were right also on taking a look at whether that ball was caught or not. It was ruled a catch on the field. Wasn't just checking the feet, checking to see if he secured the catch. They ruled it incomplete, but the roughing the pass with penalty still gives him pretty good field position and a first down. They do put it down just inside the 13 yard line. So it's first and 10, Nebraska there. With 741 remaining. And they need three scores. Actually, they need uh, they need three scores on a whole bunch of two-point conversions. Abdullah almost got horse collar tackled by Travis Howard and Orion Johnson who ran him out of bounds. So we picked up about six. Kind of thought coming into this game tonight we'd find out a lot more about these two teams about the Big Ten. Coming into today's action there were only two undefeated teams in the Big Ten. This was one of them Ohio State. Northwestern was the other one. Got beat by Penn State. High snap, handoff, and Hurd's going nowhere. Guess who? John Simon. Well, we talked about the motor that he plays with. I mean, here we are, fourth quarter, seven minutes left in the game. He hadn't slowed down a bit. <laughs> I mean, he just plays hard as he can every play. And that's what endears him to a guy like Urban Meyer, his position coach Mike Vrabel, his defensive coordinator Luke Fickle. They love guys like that. There's Mike Vrabel. Martinez, third down. This is two down territory. He zips one to the goal line. It's incomplete. And Bradley Roby, who's got two interceptions tonight, is the guy that broke it up. So that's fourth down. 
They did a nice job timing that. There was contact, but as he was going to the football, came right over the top of Kenny Bell and got the deflection. See, there's contact, but it's on the way to the football. Martinez wanted an interference, doesn't get it. Now it's fourth down. They've got to get it to the three yard line for a first down. They want to get it in the end zone. Might be the last time they touch it if they don't get this. Martinez scrambles, flushed out of the pocket, throws finally, and he got it complete to the two to Kenny Bell. Really nice effort by Martinez. You know, I mean, the ability to extend the play, and that's what he and Braxton Miller both have in common. They can take something that looks like a dead play and extend it with their legs, keep their eyes downfield, they're calm, their wits about them, and still make a throw, in this case, for a first down. Bell came back to the ball. He was actually in the end zone, but he did get the first down. That's what they needed. First and goal at the two. Martinez keeps it himself. Might have gotten to the one, but that's it. Michael Bennett and Curtis Grant make the stop. They really didn't give him any gain on the play. And this is just what Ohio State wants. I mean, they don't want to give up points, but you know what? The more plays they can make them run, the more clock runs out, right. the better off they are. Second down to goal. Twelfth play of the Nebraska drive. Play action. Martinez rolls. He'll keep it. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Touchdown. Two-yard score. <laughs> Just by the hair of his chitty chin chin, I think. <laughs> It's a run pass option. He goes to the sideline. He wanted to throw first. Now there's, there's the, the ball. ball. Yep. Before the knee was down, the ball crosses the plane. The Maher in for the point after. They'll review this scoring run. The previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field was a touchdown. I think if they see that replay that we just saw, that this one will stay the way it is. I don't think his knee ever touched if that was in question. I think his lower body was on the Ohio State player, so I don't think it's a knee situation. And there, it appeared as though the ball crossed the plane at that point right there. So let the official review take its course. Reminder for you, BCS Countdown's on ESPN and ESPNU tomorrow. Analysts are going to break down the key victories and defeats that took place on the gridiron over the weekend and discuss the impact on the standings. After further review, the ruling on the field of a touchdown stands as called. BCS countdown 8.30 and then at 9, presented by Discover Card tomorrow night on ESPN and ESPNU. Call confirmed, touchdown Taylor Martinez. The cap is 67 yard drive and 12 plays, but it took him almost five minutes. That's the bad news if you're a Cornhusker fan. Brett Maher in to try to make it 56 to 38. And it's up and good. So 538 remaining. Will we see an onside kick this early? Find that out when we come back. Our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Looking in on the horseshoe, great shots tonight in front of a record crowd. 106,121. We're glad we could be part of it. And they're going to all go home happy. 
for the majority of the folks that are wearing red or scarlet. The ones that made the trip from Nebraska, and we talked to quite a few of those last night. That's about a 14-hour drive, I think they said. He's not going to be so happy unless some fireworks break out here near the end of this game. Let's check in with Robert Flores. Robert. All right, Frank, AT&T All-America Player of the Week nominee. How about South Carolina quarterback Connor Shaw? Three touchdowns in South Carolina's destruction of number five, Georgia, 35-7. to seven. Gamecocks have won 10 in a row. It's their longest winning streak in school history. You can text VOTE to 34763. By the way, we're going to have an update on what just happened to Florida State in just a second, Brad. All right, Robert. I think they just scored a touchdown with almost no time left against the Seminoles, which would knock the Seminoles out of the top five. Carlos Hyde, about a three-yard run. Alonzo Whaley made the tackle. We're down to 520. Buckeyes just want to take their time. Yeah, even if you don't huddle. You definitely don't want to go hurry up now. You want to use as much of the play clock as you can, as much of the game clock. What was it, about two weeks ago when Urban kind of challenged his team and yeah. said, hey, come on, yeah. we can't play any better than this? I don't think they can play much better than this. No, I don't either. I mean, and back-to-back -back weeks, you know, in two completely different games. When they played Michigan State, again, it was like two sledgehammers, a real physical, low-scoring game tonight, more of a shootout game. Rod Smith getting another carry, scored the last time he touched it, picks up five here. You know, they always ask the question when he went to Florida, could his offense, that kind of offense, work in the SEC? Well, ultimately, he proved that it could. And so they wonder the same thing in the Big Ten. And as long as you got Braxton Miller yeah. under center and healthy, you got a shot. Career high rushing total for Braxton Miller tonight, part of 339 yards on the ground for Ohio State. Carlos Hyde also career high, 111. Third down and one, it's going to be under four minutes after this carry. Miller, first down, and gets down, but a flag down as well. Might have a holding call, trying to spring him to the outside. We've had some flags tonight, haven't we? Holding offense, number 77. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat, third down. So that negates the first down run. And I thought it was interesting. Urban Meyer, when he was talking to us about Braxton Miller, he said, and he's coached a lot of good players in all the places he's been. He yeah. says that the two guys that have been the most dynamic players, make you miss kind of guys, are Percy Harvin, who he had at Florida, who's now at the Vikings, and this guy, Braxton Miller. The, Remember, he had Alex Smith and yeah. Tim Tebow, so that's saying a lot, yeah, right? He had some big time players, but they were the two most dynamic difference maker kind of guys that he's ever coached. Now, he did some things tonight, Miller, again, as a runner that you just can't teach. He's going to keep it here, too, dancing around for a three or four yard gain. He's going to be closing on 200, isn't he? Pretty soon. <laughs> so funny too because when I talked to him at practice Thursday I said do you like running this much he says no not really <laughs> so I didn't do this in high school I said well the problem is you're too good at it that's that's why coach keeps leaning on you because you're so good at it he's so good at it. he's got 187 yards rushing tonight started off slow and once he got on track he got the wheels rolling and again Getting to the outside, picking up big chunks of yardage. And then look at this move. That's the one I like. That's the one I want to do just once without pulling both hamstrings and breaking both ankles. And the quarterback comparison tonight, which is how we started the top of the broadcast. And there's not a lot of comparison, really, although, as Todd said, Taylor Martinez has made some big plays tonight, too, yeah. but he's also had three interceptions. And that didn't help the cause tonight for Nebraska. Buchanan hasn't been too busy, especially in the second half. Punts it away, and Abdullah with the fair catch. So there's still 317 left.
Taylor Martinez gets it, put his hat on, and bring out the offense when we come back. On Monday Night Football. Nebraska needs three scores in a little over three minutes. Martinez pumps. Now comes back. I think that's incomplete. It is with 3.08 remaining. North Carolina State, we understand, is upset. The previously undefeated Seminoles of Florida State. So Texas, Florida State, and Georgia, all top 10 teams took it on the kisser today. And LSU. And LSU. Forgot that one. Upset Saturday so far. And John Simon with the sack. The ball is out. And Ohio State's got it. The guy just doesn't slow down. I mean, he, he is relentless. And he is going to play the last three minutes like he plays the first three minutes. It doesn't matter who you put into the block. This time it's Jeremiah Cyrus. He runs right around him and strips the ball in the sack. You had about 10 guys like that. You win a lot of games, yeah. wouldn't you? Well, not only you know are they great players, but they're great locker room guys. Yeah. They're great morale guys. They're great leaders because they do it by example and they rub off on the rest of your team. Ohio State's defense: three takeaways and four sacks made life miserable for Taylor Martinez. Carlos Hyde now just putting both hands around the ball, making sure that they don't give it back to Nebraska. You know, we talked about this early in the game too. Coming into the game, even though Nebraska had a winning record and only the one loss, you don't turn the ball over as much as they have done right. in the first five, six games and not have it come back to, to bite you, you know, and that's, you know, good football teams usually win the turnover margin over the course of a season. And uh, this team was minus three coming in and uh, they didn't help their cause in that department at all tonight either. Again, Braxton Miller waiting to the last moment to clap those hands, get the snap, give it off to Carlos Hyde again. And let's get another update. Here's Robert. All right, Brad, this is what I was referring to moments ago. NC State down 16 to 10 to number three, Florida State. Mike Glennon to Brian Underwood. Fourth down, touchdown pass is good, and that's it. The Wolfpack upset the Seminoles 17-16. Seems like every year when Florida State wonders if they're going to be the power of the yeah. ACC and are they all the way back and then they trip up and they trip today. So as you take a look Florida State lost LSU lost Georgia lost and Texas as well to West Virginia. Carlos Hyde still running hard. He's had a big night. We picked him as one of our impact players and he is definitely had an impact on what's going on tonight with three touchdowns. Well, just like last week, Carlos Hyde runs for the first down, and now we might see victory formation for the Ohio State Buckeyes, and no need to run another play. So the homecoming for Bo Pelini won't be a happy one. Former Ohio State player knows that this one is pretty much in the books. They had a lead, but they couldn't hold it. Ohio State, once they got their offense and their special teams in full force, that following the defensive touchdown, their first of the day on the interception, and now Carlos Hyde just going to add his fourth score on the night to it. 16 yards for Carlos for the touchdown. Well, the whole defense got sucked inside. That, that's just bad leverage by the Nebraska defense. I don't think they gave up on the play. They just got whipped, got sucked inside, and Hyde had an easy touchdown. Basil's extra point is good. 63 to 38. Remember last year, Nebraska with their biggest comeback in school history to beat Ohio State. And some of these guys, I think all of these guys remember that. Yeah. And uh, payback is secure right now with 48 seconds to go. Jimmy Johnson and Dale Earnhardt 
Atlanta Stars done at field. The chase for the Sprint Cup Championship heads to Talladega Super Speedway tomorrow. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series on ESPN at 1 o'clock. Well, this has kind of turned into a NASCAR race, too, for Ohio State's offense. And when they start doing those push-ups and stuff down there with the mascots, somebody's going to have sore arms when this one's all over. A great homecoming night. What little night there is left of it. But the Revelers here, a record sized crowd, I'm sure will find some fun to be had in Columbus 48 seconds from now. They went basically with a busy kicker just kicking off tonight. Line drive. Abdullah picks it up at the five. Gets maybe to the 21 yard line and that's about it. Well, this kind of changes the whole big picture yeah. of college football, Todd, with what happened today with some of the teams that lost. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously Alabama is still the top team. They were idle this week, so they didn't have to worry about anything. <laughs> but, you know, instead of just looking at the teams that lost and how that shakes things up, I think you look at the teams that beat them and you say, hey, wait a minute now. South Carolina, they're for real. Right. Okay. Geno Smith in West Virginia going into Austin. I still have concerns about their ability or inability to stop people on defense, but they're for real, you know, and uh, Florida's back. Yeah, I, guess, Florida, right? I think Florida is as good as either South Carolina or Georgia in the SEC East. So I, I think that, you know, we learned a lot by the teams that won today in big fashion. Including the one we have right here. That's right. This is the best team in the Big Ten yep. right here. And the only undefeated one. They'll be 2-0 and in league play. 6-0 and overall. And they will definitely be in the top ten, I'm pretty sure, tomorrow. Stay tuned. Don't forget Ford Wrap-Up Show is coming up right after our game, which is now in the books. On the 90th homecoming here in Columbus, the alums are happy, I'm sure. 101 total points in a Big Ten game. Are you kidding me? 63 to 38 is the final. And that's going to wrap it up for us. Ohio State. Pretty good looking football team. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC, ESPN the home of the Discover BCS National Championship. For Todd and Holly, Brad Nessler saying so good so long, excuse me, from Columbus and the Ford wrap-up show with Roberts coming up next.